dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahin problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies o PIDS na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiya ang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making upang bigyan din ang kalaghan ng pulisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakahalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag polisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! In need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpy is here for you. Serpy is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information. Created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SIRP, just visit the PIDS website and click the SIRP widget under the Databases tab or type serp-p.pids.gov.pa. SIRP has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2022, SERP has more than 60 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERP provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes. Labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. On the enhanced website of SERP, you can filter your research by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. All at the same time! SERP has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit SERP now! Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socioeconomic think tank. rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs, research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner, seminars, and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. 
This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Service Through Policy Research. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahin problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies, o PIDS, na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiya ang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making upang bigyan diin ang kalagahan ng polisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag polisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! Do you need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpy is here for you. Serpy is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SERP, just visit the PIDS website and click the SERP widget under the Databases tab or type serp-p.pids.gov.pa. SERP has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2022, SERPI has more than 60 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes. Labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. On the enhanced website of SERP, you can filter your research by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. All at the same time! SERP has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit SERP now! Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research. So what is PIDS? 
For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, or PIDS, has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, IDS Corner, Seminars, and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Service Through Policy Research. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the IDS webinar series where we feature our policy studies and the insights of government policymakers and program implementers, industry experts and practitioners, scholars and civil society actors. With this webinar series, which we started in 2020, PIDS hopes to provide an accessible venue for evidence-based discussion of current and emerging development issues. I'm Sheila CR, your moderator. We are now in the final stretch of our webinar series. And for our last webinar for this year, we will talk about our livestock, poultry, and dairy industries, which together account for one third of the agriculture sector's output. How can these sectors be made competitive in the domestic and international markets? Well, that's the question that we will answer today. 
through our presenters from PIDS who will discuss the results of their benchmarking studies and our invited experts from the government and the private sector. To formally start our conversation and give us more details about today's topic, may I call on our president at PIDS, Dr. Aniceto Arbeta Jr. Hey, thank you, Sheila. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the following officials. Uh, from the government, we have the Department of Agriculture under Secretary Dolfo Vicera, Assistant Secretary Designate for Mindanao, Arlan Mangilen, and Director Maria Corpus, Marila, Marila Corpus, National uh, Dairy Authority Administrator Parel Magduto. From uh, PIDS, we have our, our previous president, a BOT, uh, BOT member, Gilberto Lianto, from the academy. We have uh, Mindoro State University Director, Macario Magasca, University of Bohol, Dean Amon Dinis Tirol. Uh, from the private sector, we have Serenity Integrated Farm Proprietor, uh, John, John Rhee Naagas. Ma Madrid de Agua Farm Proprietor, Ri Emanuel Maminta. Doi isang uh, isdang lab uh, as enterprise uh, proprietor, uh, Rafael Ray Sindenio. 5G's poultry proprietor, Junil Pin Pinsi Navis. Uh, Erin Integrated Farm Chief Executive Officer, Jan Eric Chua. One Libon Farmers Association Incorporated President, Lawrence Malonda. Uh, Misamis Occidental Young Farmers Challenge Vice President, Ruel Omega. Katamkam uh, Farmers Association Chairman, Emily Nunez. Agrico Technologies Incorporated Director, Al, Al, Al Alvik Josol. Batangas Best Feed Cooperative Director, Arthur Luna. Batangas Egg Producers, Multipurpose Cooperative Director, Cecil Bertuccio, and Wally Director, John Dison, and Farm Media Development Enterprise Managing Director, uh, Fermin Diaz. From CSO, we have the Philippine Poultry Integrated Alliance Director, Peter So. From, let me also greet our friends from the media and uh, also greet our guests, colleagues from government, academe, civil service society, civil society, uh, media, private sector, and those watching through the PIDS and SERPI Facebook pages. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar. One of the United Nations goals is zero hunger uh, through food security, improve nutrition and sustainable agriculture. Having a competitive agricultural sector is crucial to attaining this goal. This afternoon, we will look into the key drivers of the Philippine agriculture, the livestock, uh, uh, poultry and dairy industries. Based on data from the Philippine Statistics Authority, these industries account for almost one third of the agricultural sector's output. However, compared to other commodities in the sector, they have received limited attention and development assistance from government. They, they were given a budget amounting to only 1.8 billion or 1.6 Uh, percent of agriculture from 2009 to 2020. Despite this, government and private sector continue to work together to improve the country's agricultural productivity. For instance, the Department of Trade and Industry strives to create an enabling environment for biotech firms improving the ES, uh, by improving the ease of uh, doing business. As a result, modern biotechnology breakthroughs that may help combat uh, animal diseases such as the African swine fever or ASF are available in the country. Recently, local company, uh, local company K KPP Powers Communities partnered with the uh, AVAC Vietnam Joint Stock Company to distribute vaccines against ASF. These are just some of the initiatives to make the livestock, dairy, and poultry industries less, less susceptible to shocks. There is uh, there more to be done to make these industries competitive and resilient, as our future PIDS studies this afternoon will show us. First, we have the study entitled Domestic Benchmarking of the Philippine Livestock, Dairy, and Poultry Industries, authored by PIDS Senior Research Fellow Sunny Domingo, 
uh, former supervising research specialist Maureen Ann uh, Usilon, senior research specialist Pauline Joy Lorenzo, and research specialist Arby Joy Manihar. The study examined the challenges in the industry players, the industry players uh, face in farm operations and the crucial role of the private sector plays in the livestock, poultry, and uh, dairy industries. In addition, the authors investigated the state of these industries and how they can uh, transform and flourish. Dr. Sandra Domingo, our presenter uh, for this paper, will discuss the key findings and recommendations to revamp the same industries. Meanwhile, the second study titled Towards uh, Competitive Livestock, Poultry, and Dairy Industries Consolidated Benchmarking Study by PIDS Senior Research Fellow Rohilano Briones and Research Analyst Isabel Espinelli compared the performance of the Philippines on the state industries with those of China, Thailand, and Vietnam. We will hear from Dr. Briones, our agriculture economics expert, his recommendations improving these industries for us to better compete in the international market. Aside from the presentation of Dr. Domingo and Dr. Briones, we'll also hear the response and insights from our invited experts. We have Dr. Ruth Miklat Sonako, Director of the Department of Agriculture's National Livestock Program and the International Training Center for Pig Husbandry at the Agricultural Training Institute. In addition, we are honored to have Dr. Danilo Fausto, the President of the Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food Incorporated or PCAFI, a private sector food group that advocates for a sustainable and globally competitive agribusiness system. We are honored that the DA and PCAFI uh, have accepted our invitation. Before I end, let me thank the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA for funding these studies and for allowing PIDS to share the findings and recommendations through this public webinar. Our attendees, uh, to our attendees, we appreciate your presence and continued participation in our webinar series. I look forward to an engaging and plotful discussion this afternoon. I now give back the floor to the moderator. Sheila? Maraming salama. Thank you very much, Dr. Orbeta. So before I introduce our, our presenters, allow me to remind you of our guidelines to join the discussion. So kung kayo po ay may uh, katanungan o komento, um, mangyari po lamang na gamitin po ninyo yung ating Q&A button sa Zoom. So pakisulat po ng inyong uh, pangalan at um, organisasyon kung nais po nyo makilala pag, uh, kapag po uh, binasa po yung inyong po mga tanong. Sa atin po namang mga presenters and discussants, maaari po kayong sumagot sa mga katanungan sa pamamagitan ng pag-type ng inyong mga sagot sa Zoom. Kung hindi po naman, pwede rin po niyong sagutin ng live yung, inyo, yung mga tanong po during the open forum. Sa ating naman pong uh, mga nanonood sa Facebook, we also encourage you to participate as well. Uh, mangyari pong gabitin ninyo yung comment section sa Facebook para sa inyo pong mga tanong. We will accommodate as many questions as possible that are relevant to the discussion during the open forum. Okay, so now that we have set the house rules, let us begin our conversation by listening to the presentations. First is the presentation from a PIDS discussion paper, which look into the domestic benchmarking of the livestock, poultry, and dairy industries. Uh, this paper was authored by PIDS Senior Research Fellow, Sunny Domingo, former Supervising Research Specialist, uh, Maureen Rosellon, Senior Research Specialist, Pauline uh, Joy Lorenzo, and Research Specialist, R.B. Joy Manihar. The presentation will be made by Dr. Domingo. Dr. Domingo has more than three decades of extensive multi-sector technical and policy research exposure in agricultural R&D and extension, natural resource management in disaster risk reduction and management. He is a member of the Technical Committee of the Philippine Agriculture and Fisheries Biotechnology Program and a member of the Council of Fellows of the Philippine Public Safety College. His current research interests include ecological integrity and environmental policy, technical agriculture and resource economics, and climate change and disaster risk management. He obtained his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and his PhD in applied economics from the Orange Campus of Charles, Charles 
Sturt University in New South Wales, Australia, as a fellow of the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, or, or ACR. Dr. Domingo, the Great. floor is now yours. Sunny, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Sheila, for that introduction. Uh, I'll just share my screen to start my presentation. Okay. So we had a bit of uh, glitch before starting this presentation, but uh, hopefully uh, we can finish smoothly this time around. So this is uh, a presentation on the, on the domestic benchmarking of the Philippine livestock, dairy and poultry industries. This was commissioned by uh, the Senate of the Philippines and of course, NEDA. We did this uh, sometime in 2021 and we completed before the end of that year. So a year after we are here to present uh, the outputs from our assessments. So the, out the outline of the presentation goes as follows. A bit of introduction, industry profile, uh, we look at swine, we look at poultry, both broiler and layer, and we look at dairy production in the country. Uh, dairy production, uh, dairy cattle, and dairy buffalo. And then we look at competitiveness, what uh, in the industries we have in the Philippines, and then the challenges that we face. In the end, we try to recommend ways forward to better uh, our local industries and make them more competitive and resilient. So in general, the livestock, dairy and poultry uh, industries account for a third of the agriculture uh, sector's output. Fiscal government support averaging only at around 1.18 billion or 1.6% of the total budget of PA from 2009 to 2020 is really very small compared to what we give to uh, crop commodities, particularly to our favored uh, cereal, cereals like uh, rice and corn. Occasional and limited livestock dispersal programs is what we have. And uh, these have not been sustained over the years. There is no broad-based organized competitive structures within the industries that we can see. We were challenged by a very serious biosecurity concern uh, during the previous years, and even now uh, with African swine fever. So we suffered around 30% loss of swine population commercial farms, 80% loss in backyard farms due to poor biosecurity practices, affecting around 61,000 farmers who had to suffer from state-led culling of uh, their swine stocks. So eventually, we are seeing reductions in uh, swine population and production in the industry. So we look at uh, benchmarking the Philippine livestock, poultry, and dairy with other countries as well within the, within the region. So we try to give you um, our showing in terms of cost and return structures, comparative advantages, uh, production management and marketing practices for all the industries. And we try to identify and analyze key policies as well as key issues within those industries. For swine, uh, we are seeing that 90% of producers are not commercial, meaning they are backyard in terms of profile. So backyard accounts for 657 percent of local production on average. Swine inventory post around 0.7% general decrease from 2019 to 2020, particularly because of ASF. 
swine population is concentrated in Calabar zone, Central Luzon, Western Visayas, Central Visayas, and Bicol. There is an increasing trend for swine production volume from 2018. Luzon dominates. Vismin, Visayas and Mindanao percentages rose in 2019, also because of uh, the ASF production shift. The Philippines uh, import uh, pork products with an increasing trend from 2012 to 2018 as well. For poultry, what we see here is that um, we have commercial farms mostly producing our local supplies. So we have, I think, the most number of inventory among the smallholders. But uh, in terms of supply in the market of broiler, uh, broiler products, uh, we are seeing that the commercial uh, poultry farms are supplying most of what we see. ASF presumed to increase chicken demand, but uh, COVID-19 restrictions also dampened the expectations. Native or improved chicken has the largest share in terms of inventory followed by broiler at 35%, layer at 19%. There is increasing consumption of chicken meat and eggs, imports for dressed chicken significantly higher than exports. And backyard farm gate prices are higher compared to what commercial farms actually get. So comparing what you have in terms of broiler production to that of swine production, we see the opposite where uh, swine production, you have mostly backyard growers contributing to what you have uh, as supply in the market. While for uh, broiler production, you see uh, commercial farms dominating in terms of supplying the local market. For buffalo, carabao, cattle dairy, we see here uh, that, uh, well, we have PCC and uh, the National Dairy Authority looking at milk production, PCC focusing on uh, dairy buffalo uh, to augment what we have as uh, the production output of your traditional uh, dairy cattle. 70% of local milk production are from small scale farms. Semi commercial farms uh, are members of dairy cooperatives, few to zero commercial dairy farms are in the country as well. Farms uh, predominantly backyard uh, for dairy buffalo um, have higher prices, but lower uh, in terms of uh, actual milk production per day. Dairy cattle comprise most milk production at 63%, followed by buffalo at 35% and goat at 2%. So just also to give you an overview of, of what we have in terms of the value chains within those industries, you see here uh, in terms of swine value chain uh, from input, farm production, distribution, processing and retail, and then eventual consumption together with the key players or key stakeholders within those levels of the value chain. So it's the same with boiler and layer industries. You have a lot of actors. Uh, certain levels that probably we can make more efficient in terms of um, transactions and uh, processing outputs. And also for, for dairy. With PCC and NDA at the forefront, uh, technically supporting our local producers. Okay, just to look at evidences as to why we are seeing such profiles in our local industries. We looked at the economic viability of certain um, producers within those industries. An example is what you see in this slide for swine production. Um, we are seeing the dominance of commercial production in terms of uh, profitability or viability um, at 139% uh, internal rate of return. 
comparing that to what you have with backyard production at 3% and actually a negative net present value for that one. So it's ironic that we are seeing most of the local uh, supply in the market coming from backyard producers when you see a very lopsided uh, presentation in terms of profitability when you compare backyard and commercial production. It's the opposite with broiler production. Um, you are seeing here uh, backyard producers having higher IRR, internal rate of return at 36%, compared that to commercial producers at 25%. Both have uh, very good net present values, making them both profitable. But the irony is uh, most of the supply of broilers are coming from commercial, commercial farms, or commercial poultries. But in fact, in this case, we're seeing that the IRR for backyard suppliers are higher or is higher. For layer production, IRR is at 44% for backyard and for commercial, it's 24%. And PV is also positive for both. I think the, the caution in terms of us interpreting the numbers lie on what we captured when we did our data gathering. So we are just seeing slices of uh, um, profitability or viability given certain industry operations. So we just probably captured that section of the, the, the population of local producers who are less efficient in terms of their production processes or practices. Now, looking at a 20 dairy carabao milk production, IRR is at 25%, and NPV is around 2.07 million. So, very uh, viable, very profitable over a 10 year period. The same goes for dairy cattle. As I mentioned earlier, dairy cattle actually produces much more milk compared to what's being produced by dairy buffalo. Uh, the difference is the milk coming from the dairy buffalo is actually getting more in terms of market price. So IRR for this one is 13%. with also very positive net present value for a 10-year operation period. So to complement what we did in terms of looking at viability, we looked at current uh, policies related to the local industries, swine, uh, dairy as well as poultry and uh, dairy production. So we have a lot in terms of uh, actual legislations and functional policies from our different departments. So a few of those are what you see here, Food Safety Act 2013, the Inspection Code, Food and Drug Authority Act, Animal Welfare Act of 1998, um, and a lot of um, administrative orders from our executive departments. So we've seen the creation of a national task force uh, in terms of controlling animal and borne diseases. Uh, we've seen the proclamation of a state of calamity because of ASF. We've seen movements in prices and the government actually trying to, to cut such increase through price control. Uh, we've increased our MAV. We've modified our MFN rates, and uh, we've set up within our communities um, groups that would uh, actually look at ASF and biosecurity, including, for example, the setting up of Bantay ASF in barangays. Of course, we also have contingency planning, uh, led by also our executive department in charge. So. More on our local uh, policy landscape. And then now we center on the key challenges for those uh, mentioned local industries. For swine, market production accounts for most output. And as I've mentioned earlier, but commercial has better productivity and profitability. So I don't know how we are actually seeing the dominance of backyard producers compared to uh, commercial producers producers when numbers actually very much lopsided viability wise. There is fluctuating price of production inputs, especially for 
record producers as commercial producers actually um, concoct their own feeds in many cases. Land development and zoning changes within our local governments. Uh, there is fast development of agricultural land to residential uh, area conversion affecting large scale farms. Poor consultation on policy decisions. There is growing distrust between industry and government. There are movement restrictions due to COVID-19 as well as ASF. There are inefficiencies in the value chain. Best practice abroad is more on the centralized scheme in terms of slaughter, processing, while we have mostly viajeros, individual uh, entrepreneurs working within the value chains. For poultry, there is high cost of feeds, pushing up cost of production. Corn composes 50% of feed volume, but 70% of the actual feed cost. Local corn is uh, more expensive than imported. So uh, our desire to protect the, uh, the local producers is actually resulting to the demise of, uh, well, to, to a negative impact to our local consumers or users of corn for feed purposes. Inter-island shipping from farm to market throws LGU boundaries drive uh, costs upward. Access to technical support, business advice, extension services, financing mechanisms hinder productivity of backyard farmers. There is inadequate uh, industry database on inventory and demand, including uh, other details as to what's happening within the local industries. There is weak participatory engagement uh, among our stakeholders and communities. For dairy, there is small market uh, demand for locally produced milk. So we are seeing the preference of uh, our local consumers uh, as regards our imported milk products. Logistics and packaging requirements entail large capital investment. There are um, extension problems on information dissemination and technology transfer. Also, as a result of our lockdowns, mobility uh, issues given COVID-19 as well as ASL. Priority, um, we need to prioritize local genetic supply uh, augmentation as well as foundation stocks as there is lowered inventory as well as low uh, earth productivity. So we need to benchmark standards for quality and handling as well. The tariff protection as the, the Philippines main trade policy tool uh, for safeguarding, for example, or limiting the increase of input costs for swine and poultry is actually resulting, as I mentioned earlier, um, to issues on higher costs for local producers. Assessment and ways forward. So we've seen consistent growth of livestock and poultry industries under mostly private stewardship. But the pandemic shocks affected sector performance um, with swine in particular, being backyard dominated and having less in terms of biosecurity measures. Poultry is commercial in terms of uh, market supply. Dairy sector is also uh, a bit commercial with policy support, but failed to actually take off as an industry. So given that, we need to continue to incentivize the private sector for them to sustain what we're seeing as uh, private sector vigor, as well as their uh, productivity. Biosecurity measures mostly responsive among commercial farms, minimal or none among smallholder backyard farms. So this is, this is an issue among smallholders, them not being compliant in terms of our required biosecurity measures. So we need to motivate them to contribute to see surveillance and control, fair compensation and enterprise survival support to encourage disclosure of detection, and transmission of disease. So we need to actually uh, motivate individuals to disclose that they have diseases within their farms. Um, that would eventually result to calling. 
So we need to give them fair compensation for them to actually disclose. For dairy industry to be more competitive against imported products, we need to improve production and processes for more investments in technology and equipment as well. Backyard farming offers livelihood, but are prone to operational inefficiencies and regulatory disadvantages. They can benefit from organizing into farmer organizations or membership in accredited. Uh, farmer organizations can be made mandatory to receive government support. Linking government policies programs with FOs to facilitate delivery of services and effectively enforce regulations, for example, disease management measures. Equipping LGUs to rationalize land use, organize and build capacities of our farmer organizations and enforce food safety, health, environment, and animal welfare regulations. We need to invest on and sustain research and data collection as inputs to policy, animal health, and performance, genetic improvement, and native animal development, feed and feeding technology, product and market development, value chains, and trade. Pursue standardization of products, particularly processed meat and dairy, their packaging. We need to work on genetic improvement and inventory buildup for swine, poultry, and dairy, including native animal improvement and breed stabilization. And market development may be opened up for private sector participation and partnership as well. We need to augment, strengthen institutional oversight at the industry national levels for responsiveness, proactivity, and sustained commodity systems development. So we are seeing a lot of entry points for augmentation uh, with regard to how the government is trying to make our local industries more productive and resilient to external stresses. And what we're seeing now is um, sort of a chaotic mix of backyard and commercial concerns. But uh, these are riddles, I think, that our uh, decision makers in government or within the bureaucracy are trying to solve and are actually progressing in terms of um, ways forward. I think that's the last uh, slide. Thank you for listening. I give you our next speaker. Dr. Thank you. Uh, Sheila, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sani Dubingo, for that uh, comprehensive presentation. So before we uh, um, listen to uh, uh, um, to the reactions of our uh, discussions, we still have one more presentation. So from the domestic benchmarking, let us see how our LPD industries compare with those of other countries. So let us listen to the second presentation, um, which was called from another PIDS paper, which this time was authored by uh, PIDS Senior Research Fellow Ro Roelano Briones and Research Analyst Isabel Espinelli. The presentation will be made by Dr. Briones, our in-house agriculture economics expert. Dr. Uh, Briones has published numerous journal articles and has edited five books on various topics in agriculture and rural development, including a book on uh, irrigation governance uh, published by PIDS. And that book won the 2022 National Academy of Science and Technology Book Award. Uh, he has a PhD in economics from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and did a uh, postdoctoral fellowship at World Fish Center in Penang, Malaysia. Dr. Briones, the floor is now yours. Thanks, thanks Sheila, and thank you for uh, this opportunity to make a presentation on this topic. So actually, uh, Sunny has uh, covered a lot of the ground, no? So this is an integrative study, just to give a background. Uh, Philippines uh, was not alone in conducting this benchmarking study because precisely the benchmarking is against other countries also with significant livestock, poultry, and dairy industries in the region. So these countries, uh, as it turned out, were China, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, there's other countries, but the logistical uh, issues with uh, engaging experts in these countries uh, well, proved too difficult. So. But th these are already uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, meaningful comparators for Philippines. No, uh, we uh, the the data and the assessments reported in this presentation 
uh, came from uh, these experts that were engaged. So PIDS uh, did this in collaboration with the Regional Center for Research, the CIRCA, the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Graduate Studies and uh, Research in Agriculture. Uh, they were the ones uh, responsible for engaging the experts in Vietnam, uh, Thailand, and China. So uh, with that spiel, I'll try to, um, having listened to uh, Sunny's presentation and knowing, uh, of course, his, his paper, uh, which is the country study for Philippines, uh, I will try to avoid repeating uh, uh, things that are already discussed and try to bring in new material from the country papers of the other countries. Next. Oh, okay, so that showed the uh, discussion paper slide. Uh, if, if you want to see the details, because I'll be going through this rather quickly, I hope, uh, that that's the discussion paper to download. So we're gonna cover uh, swine chicken and the profile of dairy, um, the, more the, the more meaty part of the analysis looking at costs and returns. So this is swine chicken, corn, uh, special mention. This was also mentioned in uh, Sunny's uh, presentation and dairy. So of course, when we present this, we'll present this as a cross country comparison. No? And lastly, developing the livestock, poultry and dairy industries. Although perhaps uh, I may go through this rather quickly because of the large overlap. Naturally, the, the overlap is not because we didn't say anything new, it's because we coordinated our studies, right? So <laughs> whatever is asserted uh, benchmarking, domestic benchmarking study, for Philippines is consistent with the overall integrative study recommendations. Next. So looking now at the swine industry. So again, Philippines, quick review. Uh, we have uh, earlier round of disease problems, growth, and then the most severe problem historically now with the African swine fever. Backyard production is the dominant uh, share Recently, commercial grid grown pork has been increasing uh, until, of course, the African swine fever. We reached nearly 2 million tons of total supply taken together in 2019, supply imports and consumption. But actually, we have fallen off from that because of the uh, local supply shock. Uh, th this has not been enough to meet domestic demand. So imports have been an upward trend over the decade of the 2010s. Uh, <clears throat> The, the growth of imports have been averaging 9%. Next. All right, comparing internationally. So global perspective. China is the top global producer of pork. So if, if we had 2 million tons odd, no? Uh, they have 43 million tons, no? Vietnam is even bigger than us, 3.3 million tons. Uh, Thailand, not so big, no? Less than a million tons. Uh, however, these figures I'm citing 2019 are already figures affected by uh, African swine fever, which has not affect, which has not been unique to Philippines, but has also severely affected China and Vietnam. Uh, at the time of the study, uh, Thailand was uh, not yet severely affected by African swine fever. Uh, in, in Thailand, uh, we still have uh, largely small scale production 92% of swine uh, growers uh, own below 50 head, but actually these uh, 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 herd sizes still larger than average in, in Philippines. Uh, similarly, China and uh, Vietnam small scale. However, we've seen since uh, 20, especially in 2021, 22, African swine fever is forcing consolidation of the swine industry, which is quite the opposite apparently of what's happening here. Here, what's been closing down are the commercials and expanding are the backyards. But in Thailand, uh, it was reported that what was growing there are, are the commercial uh, and the shutdown of the most small scale producers uh, af after the severe, after they got their own severe outbreak of African swine fever starting at 2022. Next. Okay, moving on to a profile of the uh, chicken or broiler industry. 
So this was an upward trend in the 2010s until the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm not mentioning the African swine fever because that doesn't affect chicken. But the COVID-19 pandemic did affect on the demand side, like, uh, to a large extent because uh, there was a decline in demand from institutional buyers, the, uh, the Jollibees, the Mang Inasals, because people aren't going out anymore to patronize these, uh, these restaurants no, and food chains. Uh, different from uh, swine, native chicken, well, in, including the improved breeds of native chicken, is is about 45% of the total production. There's very, very significant reliance on native or native-based breeds. Uh, and the, as, as mentioned by Sunny, this is largely, it's a commercially dominated operation, but still about a fifth of the industry produced by backyard operators. Next. So again, China, just like with swine, is the top global producer of chicken. However, its chicken production has been declining in contrast with that of Vietnam and Thailand, where up to 2020, uh, we can see a rising trend. You know? So we can say that the chicken production in China had uh, somewhat peaked, you know? uh, unlike uh, in, in, in Thailand and Vietnam, and even in the Philippines. Next. OK, moving now finally to the dairy industry. So I think it has been mentioned already in the previous presentation. Dairy production in the country has been growing, but still very, very far below the uh, milk consumption needs of the country. So most of our consumption is being imported. So it's almost 100% dependent on imports. Uh, milk production is uh, mostly organized by backyard operators, uh, mostly organized in co into cooperatives. So if you define them as commercial, that's fine. Uh, to its credit, it is the Philippine Carabao uh, uh, Center and the National Dairy Authority that have been uh, responsible for organizing uh, the, the dairy producers into cooperatives, respectively for the two main sources, namely cattle and buffalo. Uh, Calabao, no? Next. All right, uh, dairy international scene. Again, China, well, of course, China, one point, the most populous country on earth. So no wonder it's the top global producer of everything, including uh, milk. And it mostly produces milk from cattle, uh, producing about 35 million tons in 2019. Uh, and its production is on a largely, uh, mostly on a large scale basis. Thailand it produced 1.2 million tons of uh, milk, all from cattle, uh, but it still imports a lot of milk. Uh, its import dependency ratio is 60%. Uh, so these are all, of course, very tiny compared with the milk production in China. Vietnam is also around 1 million tons. But in Thailand and Vietnam, output has been rising. But China, just like with chicken, no, uh, output has not been consistently increasing. In fact, it's been on a kind of a downward, slight downward trend. Uh, unlike in China, in Vietnam and Thailand, production is still mostly small scale, so 66% of dairy households in Vietnam, say, are in the small-scale category. Next. Okay, moving now to uh, cost and returns. So as far as we can gather, so we, we were not able to get new data. We mostly relied as much as possible on existing uh, data gathered by other uh, farm budget studies uh, in Philippines and, and the, in the countries uh, covered by the assessment. So we reached, so we converted values as much as possible to comparable units, pesos, so that it would be easily understood by Philippine audience. So the best we can estimate the average cost in 2018 per kilogram of swine meat in carcass weight. So we have to be careful whether it's live weight or carcass weight. So if you're thinking, oh, that, that price doesn't compare with the price I know in my mind, uh, take into consideration that this is a dead weight, no? So 148 pesos for the backyard, but much lower, 112.4 for commercial operators. And why is that happening? Uh, we did the assessment and it's because the, the commercial operators have a much larger output, which reduces the, some of the fixed costs from utilities, labor, and rent. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we, so this already con uh, confirms the uh, presence of uh, re returns to um, economies of scale, right? In the case of Philippines. 
And we check uh, cost and returns estimates for China, Thailand, and Vietnam. And we do also confirm the presence of economies of scale, meaning large scale operations tend to have lower per unit costs. So here's a table, next that uh, provides some details. We reduced, as I said, everything to common currency units. So we have here uh, operating costs for small scale tend to be larger uh, across the board uh, in, in whatever country. So let's say Vietnam, 134 pesos uh, per unit per kilogram uh, dead uh, carcass weight. Uh, for small scale, but for large scale, the same operating cost is down to 120 pesos. Now, where is it mostly coming from? Uh, across the countries, the largest share is feeds, followed by the cost of the, uh, the, 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 the pig, the piglet, the, the stock, right? That, that's, that, that's grown up, no? So this is the, the, the piglet uh, is, is a significant share of the cost. There's also labor, veterinary supplies, utilities, and others. But the, the, the first two I mentioned are the largest share of the cost. Um, price also varies widely you know, uh, across the countries. Philippines tends to have the highest price in 2018. In China, averaged over the period studied is uh, pretty cheap, you know, uh, along with Thailand. Uh, Vietnam is in between. So therefore, uh, there are large variations in cost per kilogram. There are also large variations in price per kilogram. There's also large variations in net revenue per kilogram, which is uh, an indicator of profitability uh, engaging in engaging in this business uh, across these countries. So yeah, uh, Philippines is a higher cost producer compared with Thailand and China, but somewhat uh, lower cost producer compared with Vietnam for the large scale farms. Next. Okay, I think this summarizes uh, what I just mentioned. Uh, note in particular, the third bullet point, feed cost is high, higher in the Philippines compared with the other countries. Now, we're presenting studies from uh, China, which had these detailed breakdowns. If we get the estimate, summary estimates from other studies and we compare, this seems to be way off the mark compared with, the, so we did the conversion uh, from Euro to, to Peso in 2018. Uh, global export readers. So who are the biggest exporters of pork in the world? They're mostly in EU. Uh, and, uh, one of them is Spain, Denmark, Belgium and they're producing at the level of below 90 pesos. So here, Spain and Denmark at 86.50 in peso equivalent uh, for that year. Next. Moving now to chicken, and we isolate broiler. So uh, not the native, but the commercial broiler, not even the layers, the eggs, but just the broiler, no? So as with swine, economies of scale allow commercial broilers to reduce cost per kilogram of broiler for largely the same reasons. Uh, so we're at 71 pesos per kilogram. Now we're reckoning this in live weight, okay? For the commercial uh, operator, higher 78 pesos for the backyard operators. Uh, commercial production involves a lower cost of feed per kilogram. So somehow the larger operators are able to economize on cost of feed on a per kilogram basis. And of course, the overhead costs are divided by a larger output. So again, utilities, rent, and labor. Next. Okay, so similar table as before, uh, you can see now. Uh, Philippines turns out to be not so bad uh, for small-scale farms compared with small-scale farms in China, Thailand, uh, and Vietnam. Uh, Large-scale farms doing a little bit worse compared with China uh, and um, yeah, compared with everybody. Okay, so our small-scale farms are not doing that bad according to the figures we've gotten. But the large scale farms are uh, kind of producing at a higher cost compared with the other large scale farms in the other countries. Unfortunately, 80% of the broiler production is in these large scale farms. And you can see here, just like with swine, largest share is, uh, uh, of the cost is coming from feeds and also the, the stocks, no? 
the equivalent here is the day old chicks that they grow into from one day old to about 30 days or so uh, for broilers that they can sell uh, to, to the market. And then the rest are produced, uh, are, are uh, uh, comprised of the labor, veterinary supplies, etc. So you can see uh, cost of feeds here is not highest uh, among the countries, uh, but still higher than that of Vietnam. But the cost of day old chicks, for some reason in Philippines, is higher than in the other countries. Uh, I think in Philippines, we, the, the, the day old chick is being dominated by just two uh, um, suppliers for the entire uh, uh, broiler industry. Next. Okay, so this is the summary uh, that uh, what I just said. No, next. All right, now let me just review or emphasize some point about corn in the, in the livestock and poultry value chain. It's been discussed earlier, but reflecting some international comparisons. So we, we could see from the previous tables that feed is the main driver of cost and the main driver of feed cost turns out to be maize, no? Although there are other uh, ingredients there uh, like uh, soybean, for example, uh, but still, uh, it, it maize is the majority. Uh, from time to time, we do import a lot of wheat uh, and, and convert it into feed, uh, depending on the relative prices of uh, maize and wheat. But on average, it's still maize, no? Notice that uh, the price per 50 kilogram of swine feed in the exporting countries in the EU range from uh, 13,000 to 16,000 in 2018. Uh, sorry, this is, uh, I, uh, sorry, I forgot to uh, correct this. This is on a per ton basis. So in Philippines, in 2018, the price, uh, 2017, the prices ranged, depending on the, because there are large varieties of feed, no, for swine, between 1,000 to 1,800. So let's, Consider, let's say, 15,000 pesos for a ton. How does that uh, work out? So that's uh, 1,500 per 100 kilograms or 750 7, pesos per, per 50 kilogram sack. So the, uh, quite a significant difference uh, compared to uh, the, the price of uh, feed. So uh, the, the differences in maize price reflect in differences in feed price, which is one of the reasons uh, why Philippine uh, uh, livestock industry and poultry is not very competitive. Next. Okay. Uh, in Philippines, if you look at the maize prices, uh, at the time of the study, and I think it's still elevated, uh, between uh, 42 to 44 cents per kilogram. Uh, in China, it's between 28 to 38 cents per kilogram. Uh, even lower in Vietnam, 22 up to 29. And lowest probably range is 19 to 24 in Thailand, no? Um, Philippines is unable to benefit from the low cost of imported corn owing to high corn tariffs, which is 50% out quota rate, 35% in quota under uh, if the corn is imported with the minimum, under, within the minimum access volume of 217,000 tons. Now we, are able to set that uh, tariff rate down to 5% if we import from another ASEAN country. And indeed, up to 80% of what we do import comes from other ASEAN countries, uh, a large part from, from Thailand and a little bit from, from Indonesia. But, uh, uh, you know, it's not as abundant compared with uh, imports from uh, other countries. Uh, if we can import, say, from North America uh, and other countries, then that we, we will be able to access lower cost uh, wheat, but instead we have this 50% rates uh, that, that, that I mentioned earlier. Next. Okay, moving on to cost and returns for dairy. So uh, moving away from maize, which is not really a big factor in, in dairy industry. So it has its own uh, uh, idiosyncrasies. So according to Picard, uh, it, there's a decent profit that can be made over the long run when you consider all the various outputs of uh, a dairy concern. So in addition to the milk, you have byproducts of meat. 
uh, and this is assuming so a very crit critical indicator here is productivity or yield which is reckoned in liters of milk on a daily basis so uh, the Picard estimate was 10 liters per day which is round about what we are getting from other small-scale dairy producers in Thailand but in China uh, with their mostly large-scale producers they're getting 15 liters per day uh, and a little bit higher uh, in Vietnam at 16 to 17 liters per day. Next. So that's cattle moving on to Carabao also. Uh, the, 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 all of that stuff is saying that there is also uh, some decent returns on ideal scale using their typical farm estimate. Uh, however, uh, in our observation from doing consultations, ordinary uh, Calabao farmers have difficulty replicating exactly this profit stream. No? So if you can replicate this stream at the semi-commercial scale, you'll be profitable. However, uh, because of, uh, you know, there's the problem of disease, lower than 10, 10 liters per day productivity and so on. Sometimes many farmers are unable to replicate these favorable profit streams or income streams. Next. All right, so uh, development issues. First, the policy environment. I think it's been mentioned here, uh, regulating the industry to safeguard human and animal health. Uh, it's also been mentioned that these regulations tend to be more strictly enforced among the commercials, not really in the backyard. Then there's a stringent uh, ASF management program. Uh, however, it's been said that during the time the study was conducted, less successful than a similar program in Thailand, which uh, had a more generous spending for disease management in 2021. 2022, they had actually uh, nationwide, I believe, outbreaks, which is, as I said, forced some consolidation of the industry. Next. All right, so except for dairy, so dairy has strong government support on a per liter, say, of uh, milk basis. Uh, but for swine and uh, livestock, uh, swine and uh, chicken, uh, the government has mostly relied on the private sector to promote the development of these industries. So for dairy, the government support is R&D, uh, importation of breeder animals, organization of cooperatives was mentioned, and so on. Uh, scale of milk feeding in Philippines. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, there's also under the national feeding program a provision in the law to link local dairy production to the national school feeding program. But again, it suffers in comparison with the similar program in Thailand, which is much larger in scale and much greater percentage of dairy farmers uh, in Thailand are able to produce milk through their processing cooperatives to serve their uh, national milk, school milk feeding scheme. Next. So if you're if you're a Thai person, you would if, say of my age, you would know about this because you would have grown up drinking all the milk uh, coming uh, from from this scheme. Next. All right. So these recommendations, maybe I can glance through this quickly because uh, these also have been covered in Sunny's uh, set of recommendations. Review of trade policies. Get the tariffs and earmark it for the development from, from pork and chicken imports and uh, earmark it for regulatory services and production support. Invest more heavily in research and data collection. Develop institutional capacity in government, say, able to enforce and provide advice on biosecurity, for instance. Next. Reset the oversight system in terms of over the LPD industries. I would like to emphasize stronger regulations on zoning. So rather than flashing the pan, movement restrictions, when there is a big crisis, why not force the LGUs uh, to, uh, to be more specific and zone the, uh, the swine zone, the, the poultry zone, in contiguous areas so that you can more easily manage the biosecurity and whatever other facilities, say shared service facility for dressing and slaughter uh, that you would, uh, would like to convey for these industries. So through these consolidated arrangements, you can uh, uh, promote upgraded technology and promote stronger farmer organizations to be able to access uh, these uh, services and regulatory support and, and services, sorry, uh, regulations that government is uh, imposing or be able to comply better. 
no? And realize, uh, and it's also for their benefit that they can realize gains from economies of scale and scope, meaning uh, integrating backwards to feed production and forwards to uh, marketing. So with that, I conclude uh, this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Briones. So we have heard the, um, the results of the domestic and uh, international uh, benchmarking of our LPD industries. So now it is time to hear the reactions and the insights of our uh, discussants. Both of them are uh, experts in their respective fields and have extensive uh, experience in the agriculture sector. Okay. So our first discussant is uh, Dr. Uh, Ruth. Uh, Miklat Sunako, the Center Director from 2013 up to the present of the International Training Center on Pig Husbandry, which is one of the 17 training centers of the Agricultural Training Institute, whose mother agency is the uh, Department of Agriculture. In addition, she has been serving as the Program Director of the National Livestock Program since on November 2020. She represented the Philippines in the Alan D. Lemon Swine Conference in St. Paul at the University of Minnesota last September 2022. Well, we hope to hear from Dr. Sunako uh, relevant updates from the DA on its initiatives to um, improve the competitiveness of the LPD industries. Also, the measures being uh, implemented to help our small farmers and business owners cope with high input prices and animal diseases. And what is being done to guarantee the availability of quality yet affordable meat in the market while protecting local producers at the same time? Dr. Sunako, ma'am, the floor is now yours. Marami salamat, Ma'am Sheila, and uh, good afternoon to all our uh, uh, participants in this uh, very important. Wala po akong presentation, Ma'am Sheila, so... Uh, it's all right, ma'am. Yeah. Go ahead, so, Paul. And uh, yeah, marami po salamat for having me as uh, one of the discussants in this very important and I think a uh, very relevant um, uh, um, seminar or, or activity relative to the improvement of the livestock industry. Now I was in uh, now of course as a discussant, uh, I was informed that uh, I had to give I mean to to, to integrate and uh, summarize the two paper presentations. Nevertheless, allow me first to, to focus on paper number one, as presented by Dr. Sunny Domingo, of course, one of the research uh, science, senior research fellow of the PIDS. Now, um, of course, it focuses on domestic benchmarking and uh, particularly covering the pre-ASF and pre-COVID period. And it showed that the livestock industry particularly swine, poultry, and dairy industries has, consist, uh, as mentioned, consistently contributed a third of the agricultural sector's output. As for the major geographical producers, the island of Luzon and its province tops the list until now, covering the period of the study. On the other hand, for swine, We know that the current the top producing area nowadays belong to Central Visayas, which is uh, Region 7, Cebu and uh, the Negros provinces, including anywhere, yung iba pa nating uh, kasama doon. Now, but for chicken, uh, of course, uh, for swine, uh, it is followed by Southern Luzon, particularly yung ating Batangas area. Now for the chicken production, of course, it still belongs to Region 3, and don't put in for yung top producers natin, while Region 4A, with the acknowledged egg basket of the Philippines, San Jose City in Batangas, it is still our major egg producer. While again, for the dairy product production, Batangas is the main producer, as, as reflected in the, in the presentation, closely followed by Bukidnon. In all three uh, industries, it was shown that save for broiler production, Majority of the producers still belong to the backyard, or usually we say small holder category, with the dairy subsector relying mostly on cooperatives for production and processing. Now, again, uh, the cost of production is relatively high, owing primarily to feed cost, and therefore economies of scale will play an important role, providing bigger net returns, especially for 
commercial farms. Now, I would like to say that uh, as far as the Department of Agriculture is concerned, we have been advocating consolidation, clustering and consolidation so that we can achieve this uh, economies of scale. Nevertheless, for the livestock sector, we're just starting on this one. For, but however, for our corn and the, the crop sector, particularly our rice and corn uh, commodity banner programs, they had started this. And in fact, they have already quite a number of clusters for uh, rice and corn. Now, also, as far as the paper is concerned, it says that the current government policies and programs through Republic Acts, AOs, and memorandum circulars are deemed inadequate and non-responsive as reflected in the common identified challenge. I mean, also as presented in the paper. And these uh, challenges include lack of consultation, weak participatory engagement, and weak policy linkage among others. Now, um, slowly we, we are trying again to regain our, uh, um, the, the, the confidence of uh, the industry. Now, of course we know those in the industry in the in the industry, of course, would know what happened between 2020 until uh, the late uh, the early part of 2022. Nevertheless, as uh, as I have been saying, slowly our private sector is again talking with uh, the government with the Department of Agriculture, and uh, the, the Department of Agriculture is uh, obligingly and willingly discussing things with our private sector, as shown in their uh, frequent visits at the office of the senior undersecretary. Now, uh, also, uh, paper number one says that given the key challenges, findings, and the foregoing, the study recommends as key the mandatory organization of smallholder into farmers' organizations. Now, at the level of the Department of Agriculture, we say FCAs, uh, farmers' cooperatives and organizations, involving the same as the major implementers, beneficiaries of interventions to facilitate enforcement of regulations and disease control measures. Again, I, I would like to go back to the current policy of the Department of Agriculture, wherein most of its in interventions should and would be given as part of its implementing rules and guidelines to FCAs or uh, FOs, if I may refer to the paper being which was presented the Malibu. Now our flagship program on, um, on, 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 on the swine rehabilitation and recovery, we, we call it INSPIRE. Now uh, it focuses on INSPIRE as our major uh, beneficiary. Now uh, also the, the corn livestock integration program, which we will be um, uh, implementing this 2023 also focuses on the in, on the networking between and among these uh, FCAs, the local government units, and the, the private sector itself. Because somehow we have a way of delineating FCAs, and the, the private it's still that the private sector is different from the FCAs. But it's just semantics for us. But of course. FCAs and the, the private sector are one and the same in as much as they're not in the, in the government. Now, hopefully with the um, full realization of INSPIRE by 2024-2025, as it is a, a three-year program which we started this year, um, we would see um, uh, a greater number of FCAs or FOs being uh, the beneficiaries and implementors of our uh, programs. But as I mentioned a while ago, uh, it, has, it has been the policy of the Department of Agriculture to pay particular attention to our FCAs as our beneficiaries and implementors. Uh, again, in, in the paper, it was highlighted that the availability of data and information as inputs to policy across the value chain was highlighted. Now, uh, this has been an, an, an ongoing um, discussion between and among the private sector and, of course, the Department of Agriculture. Nevertheless, as far as the livestock group is concerned, we, we had this uh, PhilAMIS or the Philippine Annual Industry Management Information System 
as hopefully the integrating and the all encompassing uh, system and, and database to address this problem on data and information inputs coming from the Department of Agriculture. Now, uh, uh, as per our timeline, we, we hope that uh, Phil Amis will start its uh, initial rollout at the LGU and regional levels come June 2023 and by 2024 we would have this we would have this uh, also um, the, the other uh, livestock agencies because they they also have their own uh, database systems would also be somehow anchored and integrated in the field AMIS. Nevertheless we would want to start at the LGU and regional level as the data is coming from from this uh, from this level. Moreover, the paper also highly recommended that a continuous genetic improvement program covering both native and commercial breed be implemented, which would include long-term inventory buildup with adequate and appropriate investment programming. Again, uh, I, I would like to say that um, the, the two current programs of the Department of Agriculture, which is being implemented uh, under the National Livestock, uh, Livestock Program and being implemented by the regional field offices and the Bureau of Animal Industry, we have this uh, UNAIP or it's the Unified National Artificial Insemination Program, which basically focuses on, on the ruminant side of things. Because again, for the swine industry, uh, artificial insemination has long been privatized and has long been also embraced by the smallhold racers as we popularize this uh, on-farm do-it-yourself AI in the swine industry. Now, another program which could help facilitate the, 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 this, uh, the implementation of this recommendation is the Philippine Native Animal Development Program, which of course was conceptualized way back in the time of, in some time in um, the time of uh, Secretary Alcala. Now, again, it focuses on, on swine, the native swine, and also the chickens, which we have on, on a regional uh, basis. Like for example, we have multiplier farms of the rag chicken in, um, in region six. We also have a uh, nucleus and multiplier farm of, we call it Zampen, chicken in, uh, in, in region nine. So this, and of course we have the, the Sikihor uh, cattle in, in Sikihor. Uh, the, the government, the especially particularly the regional field office is giving particular attention in the development because these are relatively small uh, cattle, but our researchers, researchers from Picard, UPLB, and also the RFO are saying that this um, uh, Sikihor cattle has the very has a very big potential in contributing to the dairy industry because it is also able to produce uh, around five seven liters of milk. Parang comparable siya with uh, buffalo, but at a smaller size. So meaning uh, the feed intake is also smaller to, uh, compared, mo sa mga, like compared to, to buffaloes, which also translates, of course, to a more efficient um, uh, feeding management. Uh, we, we are exploring uh, this uh, uh, Sikihor cattle. So yun po, no? the UNAIP and the PINAD uh, programs, which... Uh, um, of course, it has to be intensified. Uh, it is an agreement that we that we have since uh, 2021. Likewise, the institutional oversight functions, which is also recommended, should be strengthened through the creation of commodity board for responsiveness, productivity, and sustained commodity system development. Now, of course, our Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fishery has a very uh, important role on this one. And um, um, uh, I remember that uh, during the presentation of the hog industry roadmap, it was very clearly emphasized that uh, uh, an oversight different from the steering committee as reflected in the commodity roadmap should be organized. 
and this was uh, approved by the committee by the banner committee and i think it should it would also be implemented in the different uh commodity programs under the livestock so it, it's it's an oversight committee and i think this one um would help uh, address this uh, clamor for responsiveness proactivity and sustained commodity system development and of course lastly as the paper number one uh, emphasize the role of the local government cannot be uh, overemphasized for various reasons stated in the study. Um, can please give me one one minute as I just have to plug in my my laptop. My apologies. Uh, just one minute lang po. I because it says low power mode. My apologies. Okay. So while we are waiting for um, Dr. Uh, Sonako to rejoin our uh, webinar, if you have any questions, just use the Q&A um, section, the Q&A button in our Zoom. And for those who are watching us on Facebook, please uh, feel free to uh, join the discussion by using the comment section. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sonako is back, ma'am. Yes, Ma'am Sheila. My my apologies for as a no worries, Ma'am. Uh oh, now again, now uh now uh, let me focus on paper number two, uh, which of course was presented by a very good friend of ours, you know, Froel Briones, our uh, again a research fellow from PIDS. Now, um, of course, the, her, his paper focused on uh, benchmarking the Philippine industries to similarly producing countries of China, Thailand, and Vietnam. Now, in terms of major producers, the focused industries are still dominated as what have been discussed in the paper by small scale uh, producers. For swine, however, consolidation is advocated in Thailand. And while Vietnam has reversed share of production post ASF, because uh, Vietnam is also a small scale, but post ASF, there was this uh, there was this presentation uh, a year ago that uh, they had not reversed the situation such that uh, it is now eighty percent commercial and twenty percent backyard. Now for the Philippines on our on, on our side of the globe, uh, we are pinning our hopes, of course, on the Inspire program as uh, the Inspire program prima. It, it does not aim to, to, to eradicate the smallhold farmers. Rather, we want to modernize and we want to commercialize the modern farmers. So that, that's why we are giving um, uh, uh, biosecured facilities with a minimum capacity of 300 heads of finishers. And likewise, we have this program for multiplier farms where in a minimum of 150 to 120 breeders is being uh, offered to our semi-commercial commercial farmers. Soon, uh, I, I'm, I'm very positive that uh, in the next three, four, two, three, four years, uh, the swine industry will recover, and um, we would be able to 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 again to, to go back to our pre-ASF uh, share of uh, commercial farms. Now, of course, China is uh, the stop producers on most of the on most of the uh, commodities. But uh, I would like to emphasize, uh, Dr. Briones said that while other countries would have lower corn prices, the study also surmised that the Philippines cannot benefit from the importation of such due to high co higher corn tariffs at 50%. Now, of course, uh, from an economic point of <laughs> now, now this is a very, very delicate issue for all of us uh, because uh, we also have to protect uh, the, 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 the corn. Uh, farmers. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, uh, let me, if people ask more, then I will also say more <laughs> later. And also, uh, Yusek Vicera is there. He could, uh, I can call a friend siguro later on. Well, call a friend, eh, no, Ma'am Sheila? Yes, and yes, also, we can call a friend. <laughs> and we also can, very interesting. Uh, we can bring in Yusek Vicera, Ma'am. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> with him. Uh oh, and also, I don't know. Um, very interesting that the CN tariff rate is only five percent. Kailang we cannot really uh, maximize its uh, its lower tariff rate because these these countries would also have uh, limited production. That's why we tend to go somewhere else. Now, um, 
the two papers, uh, of course, uh, especially uh, Dr. Briones, uh, recognized the role of PCC and NDA in terms of our dairy development, rightly so. For me, because as far as uh, poultry and uh, swine is concerned, uh, um, it is just now because of the ASF that we have this higher budget for the swine industry. Otherwise, uh, relatively, the livestock industry has the lowest budget. Again, because the justification is that it is uh, uh, privately led. Now, of course, we have the International Training Center on Pig Husbandry, but uh, it is focused on training and extension. Nevertheless, again, uh, doc again, Dr. Briones emphasized the role of farmers' organization as conduits and implementers of government assistance, technical, and regulatory uh, services to realize gains from economies of scale. Now, a very welcome and uh, refreshing and focused idea is the use of collective tariffs on pork and chicken imports. Now, of course, this is a very good uh, opportunity for us if this happens for the livestock, poultry, and dairy industry to be uh, clawed back to, to the industry. So, and uh, also the last one, uh, Dr. Briones also strongly recommends resetting the institutional oversight functions of the livestock, poultry, and dairy industries in terms of regulatory, compliance, zoning, carcass grade and standards, food safety, and animal welfare. We, we hope the Department of Agriculture uh, categorically supports the bill right now at the Senate uh, regarding the livestock, the, the, the putting up of the Livestock De Development Authority, consolidating, integrating, in strengthening the various um, uh, agencies under the National Livestock Program, BAI, NMIS, NDA, PCC, and of course, NLP, which has oversight to all these uh, four major livestock industries. Now, again, uh, maraming maraming salamat po, and thank you for the PIDS for the renewed focus and um, uh, I, I must say interest in as far as the livestock sector is concerned. Uh, your support and also the support of the private sector uh, uh, kindly continue so that we may have really this clamor for us to be having a higher budget, share of budget from the Department of Agriculture. So again, uh, maraming sa maraming salamat po at mabuhay ang industriya ng paghahayupan. Maraming salamat din po, Dr. Ruth uh, Miklat uh, Sunako of the Department of Agriculture. We are grateful for uh, your reactions to the two uh, studies as well as your updates on uh, the programs of uh, the DA to address uh, the issues and challenges being faced by our LPD industries. Okay, so at this point, uh, let us hear from the private sector, which... Uh, as noted in the studies, basically leads the three industries. And um, we are pleased to have with us today the president of the Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food Incorporated, Mr. Danilo Fausto. Mr. Fausto is an investment banker, a dairy farmer, and a civic leader. Well, he wears many hats. He is also the convener of the Agriculture and Fisheries Alliance, founder of the Talavera Dairy Cooperative and chairperson and president of the DVF, Dairy Farm Incorporated, which is involved in the production, processing, and marketing of fresh caribou's milk and other dairy products. He was a Gawad Saka National Awardee as the most outstanding agricultural entrepreneur in 2016 and a recipient of the Presidential Award for Agriculture in 2010. He was also featured in Goni Gosho's 50 Inspiring Stories of Agri Entrepreneurs and a recipient of the Most Inspiring Agripreneur Award in 2014. He is the author of the best-selling book, Dare to Dream, a Filipino entrepreneur's tale of success in dairy farming. He has a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of the Philippines and a master's degree in business administration from the De La Salle University. Mr. Fausto, sir, the floor is now yours. Maraming salamat, Sila. Uh, maraming salamat sa PIDS for the invitation. Uh, I think the benchmarking uh, 
for livestock, poultry, and dairy industries has been well taken by my idol, uh, Dr. Priones, and also Dr. Domingo, and uh, was uh, some some uh, um, reactions made by Dr. Ruth Sonapo, a good friend. I'd rather focus on the on the ground, what's going on the ground, and in the local industry, because we have discussed already what's happening uh, compared to the other countries. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, we are no longer uh, one third of the output. Uh, we started in 2019 with 31.6% of the agricultural output. We went down now to 27.75%. Next. Mm, and out of this uh, livestock, 80% is from hog. Uh, and for poultry, 68% is for chicken, and 28% uh, is from egg. Uh, egg is becoming very popular, especially to the uh, poultry growers. Next. We lost uh, 6.3 million heads of hogs, of pigs, from 2019 to 2021. Uh, from 27 million, it went down to 20. 20,885,000 heads. Uh, that is what we are now in 2021. Next. However, next slide. If you can see, it's small, but uh, except for the uh, car, uh, can 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 I can I show the previous slide, please? Yeah. Except for the car, uh, everything is being going back to uh, recovery. For Central Luzon, before we went down by 75%, uh, in 2022, we are now at less than 1% in terms of uh, uh, reduction in uh, hogs. In the Calabar zone, from 35, from 32% down to 5%. In the Ilocos region, from 44% to 29%. Next, please. So we can see here that Central Luzon is now recovering. It has, from the previous 85% uh, down, negative 85%. We are now 42% growth, uh, positive growth, and including the vehicle region, who is now recovering. So according to, uh, uh, as said by Dr. Sonako, uh, we are now recovering and hope this will uh, persist. Next. So in absence, in the absence of the, of the Central Luzon area, uh, we get our uh, hogs from Western Visayas, Central Visayas, and Calabar Zone, uh, and Northern Mindanao. These are the major producers now. But the challenge is now how to bring this to NCR uh, because of logistical uh, uh, problems. Next. For the dairy, we are still importing more than a billion dollars every year of uh, dairy products. And we are only producing 1% of our requirement. The 5% uh, sufficiency is for the ready to drink milk. But for the total uh, requirement for the dairy products like cheese and other products, yogurts, ice cream, and so on, we are uh, importing 99% uh, of our dairy products. Uh, mostly, next, please. Next, mostly from the United States uh, and New Zealand and a portion from Netherlands and Australia. As you can see, we have only 26,000 uh, in the milk line and uh, 15,000 only for cattle and carabao. That is where we get all the milk that is being produced in the Philippines. Next, please. As you can see, uh, we need at least 900, in my estimate, if you're producing about seven liters per day at average uh, for carabaos and cattle combined, we should be able, we should have 945,000 heads in the milk line. That means we should have an estimate of 3 million uh, herd uh, of dairy uh, cattle, both buffalo and cow. We have uh, an inventory of 2.8 uh, million, at 2.8 million carabao, but the dairy uh, type is only 19,000. Uh, and for cattle, for cow, we have 
uh, million cows, but we only have 27,000 dairy cows. So it needs a lot of uh, breeding and genetics improvement to bring it up to 900 or 1 million heads in the dairy line. We have a long, long way to go as far as the dairy industry is concerned. Next. I made a little, a simple calculation on the demand and supply side based on the per capita consumption. For pork, uh, based on the PSA, we have uh, 15 kilos per capita consumption based on the production in 2021, we're still at a surplus of 16,000 metric tons. But we are importing 488,000 metric tons, even though we have a surplus. Likewise, the chicken, we have 14.32 uh, kilos per capita. That is from Statistica. And based on our production in 2021, that's uh, against the demand of 1.6 million. Uh, we are using 112 million population based on the projection of the World Bank of our population for 2022. We have a surplus of chicken of 140,000 metric ton, but we are importing 404,000 metric ton. That is why perhaps uh, our poultry growers are not loading their farms because of this importation, uh, despite the surplus that we have here. It's a simple calculation based on per capita and the production versus the estimated demand. For beef, uh, we are in surplus of 13 point uh, 45 metric thousand metric ton, but we have imported 225 thousand metric ton based on the USDA data. I don't know what is the data that came in with the Philippines. If there's a difference, meron konting magic don sa we should ask the Bureau of Customs where it went. For the dairy, uh, 22 liters is the PSA data uh, per capita consumption. We have a deficit of 2.4. Uh, a million liters uh, requirement that we have imported 2.9 uh, million liters. This is a net import. Uh, this is about, about 3.4 uh, million actual importation, but 50,000 liters were re-exported uh, in the dairy section. Next, please. So uh, talking about swine, 15% only of our local production is being used by our processor for the simple reason that the processor requires industrial grade meat versus the local production which is stable meat what does this mean anong ibig kong sabihin ito the uh, the processor requires uh, 150 kilos yung ma may malaking taba however the local uh, producer is only producing 80 to 100 kilos para manipis lang yung taba Pag malaki yung taba, hindi mabibili sa palengke. So ayaw nilang mag-produce ng, uh, ng, ng uh, mataba na baboy sa 150 kilos. If you, if you have a pre-ordered or a contract with the processor, we will produce 150 kilos pero bibilin mo. Ang problema, presyo. Hindi sila magkasundo sa presyo. Kaya hanggang ngayon, there is a mismatch for the industrial grade meat versus the table meat being produced uh, locally. The cost consideration, uh, mechanically the bone meat, uh, which has a 5% tariff, which is used for hot dogs and sausages, and also the Indian beef mupalo, yung ginagawa, ginagamit actually as corned beef. Uh, we're eating corned beef from buffalo, especially coming from India, uh, because buffalo meat is red meat, like uh, cattle beef has pie bruise. No? Uh, and the next is support facilities gap. The refrigeration requirement of processors are not met by local producers. And consistency. Uh, local production of manufacturing meat is not consistent in quality uh, and fat content. Next, please. So uh, I, I put some outlook. ASF uh, is expected to remain in the Philippines until we have a vaccine uh, for ASF. Thus, the backyard production will drop, leaving a void for commercial farms to develop. Many small commercial farms will be closed, with some acquired by larger farms to scale up, leading to further market concentration. Successful farms will have better biosecurity, 
and this cannot be produced by small farms. They cannot afford a much uh, stringent biosecurity, which will reduce the impact of the ASF. Uh, then uh, peak productivity uh, will recover. Uh, however, uh, still they will up for uh, chicken for, for, for production concentrated in Metro Manila uh, and pork imports will increase to meet the domestic demand. Next slide, please. I have five minutes. <laughs> That's the problem with being the last. <laughs> I lost my time. Now, compared to the uh, commercial farms and the, local, uh, the small farms, by 2021, which is happening now, only from the 22% commercial and 78% uh, backyard, we are now down to 31% or 35% uh, backyard and 65% commercial. And it is projected to have a 70-30 later on. It will now be the, the day for the commercial farms. Next. Next, please. Uh, okay, can we can pass on this uh, next slide? I have a limited time. I'd like to move fast. Cold chain will be improved because of the private sector uh, investment. Pork branding will become the norm as it for chicken. Uh, the imports will become uh, high, remain high due to lower prices from imported products and improved cold chain. Uh, the backyard will not recover. All those small parts will remain due to the geographical challenges in the Philippines. Next. Uh, the pork shortage was anticipated. A massive import of chicken has been made. And low price of chicken combined with high price of pork will increase consumption of chicken over for pork. Uh, while uh, the pig or the hog will recover in the medium term, uh, but in the long term, it still be chicken. Next, please. Mm -hmm. um, now the price is 200 SRP of chicken. Uh, there was an oversupply before when there's uh, during the pandemic, as mentioned by Dr. Bionis. And uh, the chicken, as because of the oversupply, they move to producing eggs because eggs cannot be imported. Next. So how do we develop? Uh, it's been mentioned that we just like on hogs, the population, and the result, the problem of ASS, ASF. For chicken, we have to, to develop the corn industry, uh, especially the dryer, dryer and warehousing post-service facilities. For dairy, herd buildup through by, uh, genetics improvement and uh, technical intervention for greater productivity. Sustain milk, uh, milk feeding program to develop the dairy industry. We are now supplying about 60% of the milk feeding program, at this, but we are increasing. We are participant to this uh, milk feeding program. Mm -hmm. Establish the real-time information network system and perhaps revive the price and volume watch task force. Uh, composed of interagencies involved in the trade and stakeholders to determine the current and projected demand and supply conditions. Wag lang tayo import and import. Titingin ka sa, titingin ka sa kisame and then that's your supply uh, shortage. Next. Biosecurity, of course, is primary. We need to establish the first uh, border quarantine facility. It's been uh, our uh, request uh, since 2019. This was funded until now. It's not been set up. We have to discover a vaccine. Vietnam and China has some vaccine, but the efficacy is not stable. It's not yet there. We still have to uh, get some more efficient with efficacy of high efficacy for Vietnam and uh, China's uh, ASF vaccine. And of course, providing incentives and easy access to credit. Easy access to credit, uh, very important. We cannot have anything of this if you do not have the capital to improve and expand your business. Of course, improved cold chain is uh, self-explanatory. Farm consolidation has been mentioned. Uh, and uh, we have the, the backyard uh, farmers should integrate to consolidate and uh, perhaps uh, integrate upstream with feed production as well as downstream with slaughtering and meat cutting including retail and food service. If this is about, you talk about uh, uh, Bounty Fresh that you have the chooks to go. No? Next. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, 
I don't have time. If I have more time, I have to discuss one more, three more slides. If not, <laughs> I'll just uh, wait for the, I want to discuss more on the credit access, but uh, uh -huh. okay. Danny, Thank you very much. Sir Danny, we can give you um uh, three more minutes to, to finish your okay. slides, sir. Yes. Thank please. you. Can 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 we go to the next slide? I'm talking about credit access, which is yes. very important. This is very important in all the agricultural sector. If you yeah. see this a report of the COA for 2021, mm -hmm. uh the Philippine Guarantee Corporation who guarantees the loan of all agricultural in terms of uh, lending to, we have the Agricultural Guarantee Loan Fund. Uh, and uh, out of the 190 billion guaranteed, 96% uh, went to real estate. Can you imagine that mm -hmm. the Philippine government is guaranteeing the condominium in BGC and Makati and nothing is guaranteed for the farmer? That's how the government is guaranteeing our farmer to produce. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, yes. Uh, the Agricultural Guarantee Fund has accumulated $10.6 because of the penalties paid by the bank from the Agri-Agra loan. And based on the Central Bank Monetary uh, Regulation, they can guarantee $32 billion, and yet they are only guaranteeing only $4 billion. Um, that that's uh, that's how it's now. Uh, it's done. This is the the COA report for 2021. Next slide. The final slide will show you uh, the potential. We have 1.6 trillion available in the banks in the Agri Agra law. The compliance is only 10 percent for a 25 percent Agri Agra law. So, uh, and uh, the banks would rather pay the penalty rather than lend to the agricultural sector to the livestock sector to expand and improve and uh, be able to produce more. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the time, Sheila. No worries, sir. Thank you very much, Sir Danny, for those enlightening remarks, which gives us uh, the perspective of the private sector on the issues and challenges facing our LTD industries. Um, your um, presentation, sir, is very important because um, you see what's happening on the ground. Um, so. Friends, we have received a number of interesting questions from our participants, but before I read them, um, perhaps we can spend a bit more time to clarify some of the results um, presented in the two studies. But before that, uh, may I ask um, our um, authors, Dr. Briones and Dr. Uh, Sunny Domingo, if they have any reaction or any response to the um, comments uh, presented or um, expressed by our two discussants. May we hear first from Sunny if you have any response? Yes, Sheila. Uh, thanks. And thank you to our uh, two panelists, reactors. I think uh, in general, what they uh, manifested were validations of the results of our benchmarking study. So for Dr. Sonapo, she actually also pinpointed, for example, uh, us looking into the organization of farmers, us looking into having more efficient sources of data or platforms for data sharing. That's also, I think, present in uh, Mr. Pausto's uh, presentation. Um, the key entry points for intervention, for example, were also validated by, by the two reactors. For example, uh, we need inventory buildup uh, for us to really augment dairy production in the country, given that we have a very small number of, of head for both uh, dairy cattle and dairy, and, uh, dairy buffalo. Institutional strengthening uh, was also mentioned. Uh, the same area of uh, intervention, I think that we have also uh, looked into, she mentioned um, NDA and PCC as main institutional partners for us to augment, for example, uh, dairy production in the country and also setting up uh, production hubs for both dairy cattle and dairy carabao. But when we were looking at PCC and NDA and we were actually asking our stakeholders in terms of their uh, professional inputs no, or insights with regard to institutional functions, there was... Um, a mention of the possible complementation with regard to the uh, personnel of NDA and PCC. So they can actually 
better complement each other and possibly strengthen the institutional platform uh, overseeing the development of dairy in the country. May that be dairy buffalo or dairy cattle. Um, Okay. So, uh, uh, probably last item in my mm -hmm. uh, reaction to their manifestations. Um, well, we've seen as well uh, the numbers in terms of local supply mm -hmm. coming from both uh, backyard producers and commercial producers. And I think a very deep insight came from Mr. Fausto in these manifestations. And that would be a very good addition to the discourses uh, with mm -hmm. regard to the local uh, supply, catering to the local demand of this uh, local produce. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Sheila. Thank you very much, Dr. Sonny Dugingon. Now may we hear the response of uh, Dr. Ruel Briones. Ruel? Yeah, uh, much appreciated comments of our two panelists. Uh, thanks, Danny, for mentioning in particular yung processing, the, the, the gaps with processing. Uh, I'm actually helping the, the CIRCA team in developing, uh, well, the team of consultants developing the, on behalf of the whole industry, the processing, uh, process port industry roadmap. And this was all, also mentioned. <clears throat> One big issue is it's difficult for backyard racers to sell this 100, 150 kilogram range because you have to keep the, the pig and fatten it longer period, right? And they want cash immediately. <laughs> it's, that's the so. I, my understanding is mostly these are in the commercial sector, which is able to produce the the fifteen percent. So the eighty five percent is being imported. And if you look at the sources, this pork that is being imported by our local processors, they're also produced in massive, uh, large scale production uh, in North America and Europe. So uh, this is really a, a, a big, big scale uh, game now if you want to be globally competitive. So I'm really skeptical uh, about uh, the future of backyard racers. Unfortunately, uh, in our country, this is, is, is kind of a livelihood thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a person tries to make money maybe under my house, even in a peri-urban area. Uh, sorry, neighbors, I want to raise some pigs and make some extra cash on the side. No, So this, this becomes the, the, the typical backyard operation. And we've persisted in that system. And Dr. Ruth has also mentioned the disadvantages of this system. But I think uh, it's now 2022. It's time to review that system and put it uh, on, on a more modern basis. Thanks also to Dr. Ruth for mentioning this livestock and poultry development bill. So I, I hope that it will be refiled. I understand it's the Committee on Agriculture and Food, uh, the chairperson herself, uh, Senator Villar, uh, who is pushing for this, containing the provisions there, including the earmarking. So I, in, in the versions of the bill I've seen, the tariffs for uh, the, the pork importation, the the chicken importation and the maize importation are going to be um, uh, pulled and uh, for the development and earmarked for the development of the industries. There's a little bit, so the, the model for this is actually the, uh, the rice tarification, but that was relatively easy because that's rice for rice. This is three uh, for the three industries. So how do you dole out no, the, 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 the pool of funds? We had an earlier experience for the minimum access volume all pulled together uh, for the Agricultural Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. But that came to grief as uh, evaluations have shown that that has not really helped uh, meaningfully the agricultural sector as even a PIDS study way back uh, in 2013, I understand, uh, has, has uh, shown. So uh, these, these comments are much appreciated. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Briones. Well, if uh, we may go deeper into the um, uh, dominance or predominance of uh, the backyard uh, of backyard production in the swine industry, because it's clear in the cost and returns analysis conducted by Dr. Domingo that going commercial in swine production is more profitable. But why 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 are there more backyard 
uh, racers in the or ba backyard farmers in the swine industry. Can you enlighten us on the reasons? Is this, is this an issue of capital and the higher operating costs if they go commercial? And how can we move towards uh, more commercial production? Earlier, Dr. Ruth mentioned about some programs of the DA, um, like the Inspire, which she said is not, not really meant to uh, wipe out uh, backyard uh, producers. And I think Dr. or Mr. Fausto mentioned his outlook for the industry that uh, soon uh, it will be on a more commercial scale. So what are the reasons, um, Dr. Briones, and perhaps we can also ask our other um, speakers? Well, I think uh, a lot of the people who are uh, tempted to, to enter the industry, they hear news that, you know, a neighbor or si compare, uh, they, they made quite a killing, you know, uh, recently, especially when uh, pork prices went up. And it's with a little bit of capital on a backyard basis, it's not that difficult mm -hmm. uh, to go into the industry. So this is not for the poorest of the poor, but for, you know, uh, middle, lower middle class with a little bit of space in your house. Mm -hmm. This is something that you can fairly easily uh, go into and try to make a quick buck. But then, of course, turns out that you have to, if, if you're really serious about it, you have to comply with a lot of local regulations. But then, uh, especially, you know, the, the waste disposal, uh, you have to comply with all of these permits from the, the, uh, the, the local government. Uh, but but uh, it, the commercials really do religiously comply with that because there's a huge loss if they're shut down by the veterinarian, no? the provincial mm -hmm or municipal veterinarian. But the backyard, because there are so many of them, uh, they can afford, <laughs> they, can, they can kind of evade the, the, mm -hmm. the, these regulations. So it's kind of not a level playing field uh, that, that allows the backyard, I believe, to proliferate uh, even up to today. But I do agree, and I hope uh, it's true that Danny's projection will, will happen, that uh, the, the industry will now start consolidating. Thank you very much, uh, Ruel. Uh, Doc, Mr. Fausto, Sir Danny? Yeah, tama yung sinasabi ni Dr. Beones, no? Yung iba kasi, uh, pag-aalaga ng konting baboy para sa matrikula ng anak pagdating ng, ano, no? ng matriculation. Pero ngayon, we have the ASF. Pag tinamaan ng ASF, bubus yan. So, lugi ang aabuti mm -hmm. nila. Because most of them, at nagtitipid sa feeds, papakainin ang kaning baboy, yung swill feeding, no? Uh, the rock and so on, not enough the fees that is uh, scientifically required for nutrition mm -hmm. uh, para makatipid, just uh, pamapalaki lang yung baboy. Uh, but that will that will pass kasi tatama, may, may African swine fever ka eh. So mm -hmm. you need really biosecurity, pati yung repopulation ng DA. Uh, mm -hmm. Pardon me, Dr. Sunapo. No? Uh, pag binigyan mo yung maliliit na backyard yan, they do not have the capacity to provide enough biosecurity measures mm -hmm. to protect their farm. Ngayon, yung mga commercial farm, Dito, kaya nagbabali ka na sa Central Luzon kasi malalaki na yan. They have now the biosecurity system on their own. They finance it. Uh, kaya nagbabali ka na siya, pero malalaki na to. Eh, yung maliliit, mayroon 10, 10 sao ka o 20 sao, ubus yan. Pag tinamaan ng ano, uh, wala kang pakikinabangan. So, mm -hmm. dadating sila doon at uh, madadala sila and it will, it will really... Uh, uh, die down yung pag-aalaga mm -hmm. they will go to another chicken siguro mag-alaga ng mm -hmm. <laughs> native chicken <laughs> kung ano may iisip ng uh, ano, mga enterprising ng ating mga kababayan mm -hmm. kung ano na iisip para sa mapag-aaral yung mga anak mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, thank you thank, thank you very much Sir Danny um, Dr. Ruth would you have anything to say? Yeah, thank you, Doc Sheila, and thank you, Sir Danny, yung idol ko po yan. Yeah, he's a very ano, avid supporter po ng ating livestock uh, industry. Actually, ay, gusto kong mag-comment kanina pa, Ma'am Sheila, dun sa, kasi si, si Doc Roni, si Dr. Domingo, uh, emphasized na why is it that the IRR for the backyard sector is we see it as a very low 2%, nakitako dito, and then for the commercial, 144%. Nevertheless, uh, Alam niyo po, when we are, when, if we do this uh, cost 
price uh, structure ng ating, kasi we, we, we usually do that together with our private sector. Uh, we really see na the cost, the cost of production for the backyard, for the sm uh, small scale uh, operator is, is uh, low compared sa, ano, compared sa commercial racers natin. Um, here in the paper of the Dr. Soriano kasi, kaya tinignan ko siya, binalikan ko siya. Perhaps for purposes of comparison kasi, they also included in the backyard uh, computation yung labor, uh, land rental. Now, usually kasi sa small hold natin, they don't really care about this. Kasi family labor, so they don't put uh, value on this one. Kaya pag nag-compute, usually wala yung mga ganun. And then, of course, the other environmental uh, uh, ano ba, taxes that the commercial uh, farm has to contend with while yung ating mga smallhold racers, wala silang mga ganun. Kasi as far as the Department of uh, Environment is concerned, you will be asked to, to have this uh, waste management facility kapag nasa 100 heads and above yung alaga mo. Now, of course, to us, it, it's already commercial sector. So, so that point of view, kaya in, in our cost uh, structure, uh, we really make it a point to have one for the small hold and one for the commercial sector. And it, it really shows na yung ating cost of production for the small hold is low comparatively mm -hmm. kasi nga they don't have all the expenses that a commercial uh, swine racer would have. Pero yon that's on a one head comparison per kilogram basis. Of course, if we talk of economies of scale, the, the profile would be different because as for us also at the International Training on Cent Center on Pig Husbandry, we say that swine production is economies of scale, that swine production is not really for, for, for the yung, 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 natin do, yung, yung subsistent farmer, it's not for them. Kasi you need feeds, you need the medicines. Diba? So uh, those kinds of things. Uh, I, I just would like to, to point that out. You know? mm -hmm. um, but uh, never nevertheless, at the Department of Agriculture, sabi ko nga kanina, our INSPIRE program, the aim is to modernize the aim is to rehabilitate. The, the aim is to level up our uh, swine industry. Bali, nire-require natin sila na 100 kilograms minimum. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, yung po sa comment kanina ni ng ating ano, kaibigan si, Doc, si, si Sir Danny, uh, uh, ano naman po, under our INSPIRE program, we, we don't really give... Uh, uh, pigs na sa ating mga especially breeders sa ating mga small hold farmers actually naka-focus tayo diyan sa semi-commercial and commercial uh, mm -hmm. producers natin. Uh -huh. Thank you very much Ma'am Ruth no. Um I think all of you agree that um consolidation is one way forward no. So to consolidate this uh small uh farmers, small backyard farmers into uh, cooperatives, no? Um, and and really, actually, what comes to mind sa akin is yung Fonterra model, no? Which is a dairy cooperative uh, in, in New Zealand, one of the largest uh, farmers cooperative in the world, is having a Fonterra uh, in the future a long shot for, for the Philippines. What are the prospects kaya of organizing our LPD backyard producers? And uh, another question is, do we have data on the number of LPD-related cooperatives? And are, are they engaged in commercial production? Uh, yes. Sunny, perhaps you can answer this because you're familiar with Fonterra having lived in, in Australia. Uh, well, first, I'd like to react to the uh, okay. manifestations of our reactors. It is indeed uh, a very interesting detail. Um, to look at, for example, the balance between the backyard growers and the commercial growers within the, the swine industry. And it's ironic that, for example, we have seen lower profitability figures for smallholders compared to commercial growers, yet they dominate the market in terms of mm -hmm. supply. 
yung tanong kanina ni ni Dr. Sonaco as regards uh, why ang baba ng IRR ng ating mm. backyard. I mentioned earlier that this is a slice of reality because in our data gathering activities, we did KIIs, FGDs of, uh, of growers. And really, it's not covering everybody, all the growers. But uh, a bit of explanation as regards the, the low figure compared to commercial is that well, we are looking at streams of cash flows and outflows, outflows and inflows. And uh, we are looking at multi-year uh, production activities, including initial investments that are very high for commercial growers. Yun po yung nag-drag sa kanya eh. mm-hmm. For commercial, commercial production, you have a lot of initial investment required. For small growers, maliit lang po yung kailangan natin. Na, na requirement natin in terms of capital outlay and you have to depreciate over the years. So yun po. But we also considered, as you mentioned earlier, labor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we did actually computed uh, the labor requirement for smallholder also for uh, compare that to to the commercial growers. Kasama po siya. Mataas lang talaga yung, yung overhead natin for commercial growers and then mataas yung initial investment. Ano po? Um... And then, comparably siguro, yung ating backyard growers, mm-hmm. uh, in proportion, mataas siya lalo kasi uh, you're looking at smaller numbers uh, in the end, no? in terms of uh, returns compared to costs. So, yun lang po rin, uh, I think, the balancing answer to the earlier question. But indeed, it's a very interesting reader. And if uh, Sir Fausto's projection uh, materializes, no, that... Uh, magbaliktad yung ating scenario with the commercial growers actually contributing more to the local market. I think that will be a very welcome scenario. But uh, let's not forget the small growers. And I think organization, aggregation, as also mentioned earlier, uh, should be the key forward for them to be more productive, for them to have that greater bargaining uh, power in the market. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, there are realities that uh, make something like that a bit difficult to to happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, for example, uh, we are looking at a set of small holders who are very difficult to uh, well to to deal with in terms mm-hmm. of biosecurity. Mm-hmm. Sabi ka nung, nung isang uh, informant namin, parang uh, parang almost zero yung biosecurity preparation ng ating small holders. So it's us actually telling them right now to be conscious about biosecurity because mm-hmm. of ASF. What more if we're telling them to actually aggregate into groups and operate as, as one big entity or a bigger entity that can compare with the commercial growing. Mm-hmm. So yun lang yung realities natin on the ground. And I think that's also comparable with, with what's uh, happening outside the country in the global scenario. You, know? you need uh, economies of scale to be competitive. Mm-hmm. And I think that question that you mentioned earlier refers to something like that. Mm-hmm. It has to happen in the Philippines if we want to have our uh, swine industry more competitive uh, in the future. Thank you. Uh, Thank you Sheila. very much, uh, Sunny. Perhaps I can uh, ask uh, Dr. Uh, Sonako for uh, uh, the question that I raised earlier on consolidation. Ma'am, uh, uh, what do you think are the prospects of organizing our LTD backyard uh, producers? And mm. do we have data on the number of LTD-related cooperatives? And are they engaged in commercial production, ma'am? Mm, yeah. Uh, see, actually, when, when we were first conceptualizing this um, INSPIRE program, it deals with FCAs, Farmers Cooperatives and Association, it was uh, the, the Dr. Fausto who was telling me, Ruth, you organize mo palang yan. So how far can you go through already with the with the Inspire program? But then having in mind the different cooperatives natin, the the more um, um, uh, improved cooperatives, because we talk about CDC, we talk about Limpoma, we talk about Soemco, we talk about Lamak, we talk about um, uh, yung kabas pa natin sa, ano, sa, sa region 2, that, that, uh, I, I was very upbeat and positive. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I would tend to, yes, uh, but then to answer your question, Ma'am Sheila, yes, we do have an inventory of uh, livestock-based cooperatives 
and for actually the, 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 the whole gamut of uh, cooperatives and organizations which we can pop, including the agrarian reform beneficiaries and organizations. We had them tapped so that they can participate fully in our live um, uh, activities, not only on swine, but on other uh, commodities as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yes, um, as far, while they are livestock-based um, uh, cooperatives and associations, very few would have a farm of their own. You know, like the um, like the model of seed sea, like the model of uh, lama. Uh, the yung, yung cooperative they have their own uh, farm to to, mm -hmm. to 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 boot. But then most of the cooperatives individual farms pa rin. Mm -hmm. But then members sila nung livestock based cooperative na yon. Mm -hmm. Now um, what what we are saying is that. Um, uh, we give assistance, we give grant to these uh, FCAs, and then uh, from among yourselves, you decide whether it it, um, it will be run by the cooperative. Of course, it should be run by the cooperative, but then, of course, the, the land is a counterpart. It's it, it's part of the program that they should be providing, and also the feeds that they should have this uh, integrator somewhat which can provide them the, the feed requirement of the animals. So these kinds of things. But um, I would say that generally 70-80% of our uh, recipients now in the, under the INSPIRE program, um, most of them are really uh, the more um, uh, uh, the, the more interested and uh, uh, more successful cooperatives which are livestock based. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, medyo it's a, it's a bit different compared more with the crop uh, sector and livestock. Okay. Okay. We have the co-op, pero still very few would have their own farms. It's still individual farms. Okay, okay. Thank you very no, much. But, but we are back. Okay. Um, Sir Dani, I think uh, Sir Dani has something to say. Yeah. Sir, go, go ahead. I'd just like to react to the well, yung, uh, cooperative. No? If you will look at the CDA annual report, there are 18,000 more or less uh, cooperative that are registered. Out of the 11,000 cooperative, 11,000 are operational, meaning nagre-report. Mm -hmm. Do sa 11,000 na yan, Less than 700 ang agricultural-related cooperative, including agrarian reform. Mga 145,000 farmers lang yan, no? whether it's livestock or what. I just uh, assumed the chairmanship last month of the Dairy Confederation of the Philippines. When I was there about 10, uh, a decade ago, meron kaming 11 federations, and each federation will have about uh, 30 to 40 dairy cooperatives. Alam mo bang naubos lahat? Walang natira because of compliance requirement of CDA. Alam mo, pag sub, uh, for example, like in our Talavera Dairy Coffee, which I organized, yung mga member namin from the barangay has to attend seminars. Uh, nung wala pang uh, COVID, buti ngayon, virtual na eh. Nakakatipid kami. You have, yung pang pamasahe lang nila sa tricycle going to the town. Wala na silang pamasahe. Papupuntahin mo pa sa region para mag-seminar. Ano? And if you did not attend the seminar, you will not uh, be qualified to be member of the cooperative or officer of the cooperative. Naubos yung mga requirement. Meron kang, ex meron kang uh, auditor na kailangan eh, CPA na accredited na CDA. Hindi ngunit CPA ka. You can audit the book of COVID. Kailangan accredited ka ng CDA. Mahigpit pa sa central bank yung CDA. You know? Naubos ang cooperative. You need an army of community organizers at DA to be able to organize this cooperative. So we are proposing to the president, when I wrote him, to create a Bureau of Agricultural Cooperative inside the DA para ma-accelerate yung organization at yung consolidation na yan. While the DA is consolidating the farm, merong programa and Department of Agrarian Reform they called SPLIT, SPLIT program. It is funded by World Bank, 21 billion funded. Ang trabaho ng split, i-splitin yung mga tao. Ikaw naman sa DA, kino-consolidate mo yung mga tao. <laughs> yun yung mga polisiya natin. Sabi nila mga sa, sa DARC, 
Eh hindi eh, naano din naman sila eh. Yung know, pag ini-split mo yung mga titulo ng mga tao, ibebenta na yan, magkakahiwa-hiwalay na yan kahit na Pilipino magsama-sama. Alam mo naman sa atin sa Pilipinas, mga Pilipino, maraming mga enterprising. <laughs> eh, yun ang problema natin. We need uh, an army of community organizers. We need extension workers. Uh, as much as possible, one extension work for every 10 barangays, just like no Masagana 99. Merong one, one uh, agricultural technician for every 10 barangays. Dapat ibalik natin yan. Ngayon, sinasabi natin yung PAPES, ano, yung sa ating grupo, but uh, provincial level yon. baba natin hanggang barangay para tulungan yung mga tao at uh, maalala yan. And uh, we need about 2,000 of them. Uh, kaya-kaya yan ang DA. Uh, okay. Umpisahan mo na, Dr. Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Danny. Um, let's entertain uh, some questions from uh, uh, Ma'am. You have some uh, yeah, to say Yeah, Sheila, ano ko lang, very quick, ano ko lang po, uh, answer ko kay Sir Danny, kasi talaga po madalas naman di kayo magkausap niya. Sir Danny, ano lang po, kasi sabi mo nga, binanggit mo CDA, no? Um, we are heavily coordinating now with CDA uh, through the Agricultural Training Institute. Kasi nga po, we have to consolidate things, eh na advocate ng DA consolidation and the clustering and consolidation eh, pero wala naman sa atin yung pag-organize nga ng mga tao but uh, sab- us- usapan lang so uh, ano lang po uh, we-, we hope uh, slowly sabi na something of course something is wrong with our agriculture but then uh, ginagawa po natin ng paraan and I know it's a be- very heavy point yung uh, por- pag-organize ng ating mga mga farmers into one, particularly yung mm-hmm. sa livestock. Mm-hmm. So, Sir Danny, thank you very much for the input. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Actually, uh, Ma'am Ruth, there is also another concern here from one of our participants um, concerning uh, consolidation. We have this question from Divine Dikito of Neda Region 9. Okay, She said, what could the government do to encourage backyard farmers to consolidate into commercial farming given that we have no clear zoning for agricultural production purposes. Another challenge would be the huge investment requirement such as infrastructure requirements and uh, feeds production, land requirements, waste disposal facility, and other necessary facilities for a consolidated farming. Ma'am Ruth? Thank you very much, Ma'am Sheila, and uh, thank you very much po, from our NEDA colleague from Region 9. I would only speak uh, for the livestock uh, 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 sector that uh, the National Livestock Program is handling. Now, in terms of clustering and consolidation that as, as applied to, to the livestock sector, what we're saying here po, is that, um, so again, cooperatives-based Padisha, FC Asia, and then, so so that's the production side of animals. But then also, he involved natin, kasi kanina, no, it was also heavily being uh, mentioned that uh, dapat hindi lang yung sa animal side, but also the feed side, because, because it's one big part of the production inputs that we need. So in consolidation, in clustering and consolidation, we are heavily tying it up with corn production and other cereals being used in... in uh, feed production. Now, in terms of sa production naman po, um, the, as, as far as our guidelines is concerned, we are saying that a, mi- a minimum of 30 farmers should be consolidated. Now, of course, RSBSA registered to sila primarily, should be consolidated for us, for them to be given the assistance. So, gan lang po kasimple natin. But, uh, more importantly, yung focus din natin on yung sa, sa feeds nila, be it uh, mm-hmm. sa dairy, be it sa, sa, sa swine, kasi po yung uh-huh. corn. And, and for uh, ruminants naman, yung other forages that they need, silage perhaps that they would have to use. But, um, so, so yun po, but we have a long way to go in terms of clustering and consolidation sa livestock, that I have to admit. Kasi po, we are very late in uh, starting it. Uh, I don't want to say wala kaming budget, pero that's the truth. And Inspire is a, uh, in start is uh, we are starting it with Inspire and another program that we have in Pung Livestock Economic and Enterprise Development uh, mm-hmm. program. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yun po. Uh-huh. Thank you very much, Ma'am Ru. No? Uh, Roel, I, I saw that you unmuted your, your microphone. Uh, do you have something to say? 
Sorry, uh, what is the, I have something to say, but I don't know what the, is, what is the question right now? Okay, uh, perhaps I can throw you this question because uh, you, you uh, gave this uh, international benchmarking. So in your analysis, uh, what do you think can we learn from the experience of uh, Vietnam, from uh, China, and from um, Thailand? Um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, having more efficient uh, and more um, competitive um, LTD industries, what are they doing differently that perhaps we can adopt here in the Philippines? I think uh, in these countries, there's a greater uh, trust by government or more assertion of political will, especially mm -hmm. towards consolidation. That's, that's what I sense no, when, when discussing with, with the experts uh, from these other countries. Um, there's also a more <laughs> uh, interesting to, to note in a socialist country like Vietnam, they were actually, when, when they uh, signed on to the WTO, they were actually more serious in, in, mm -hmm. in that uh, commitment. So they, they saw that, uh, oh, we have to really liberalize so uh, more than Thailand, more than Philippines, they liberalized their corn industry. And now they're the largest feed exporter. Uh, they eclipsed. So Thailand used to be the big uh, feed exporter in the region, mm -hmm. but they eclipsed it. And this happened soon after they liberalized their importation of corn. And this is not just what we did. No, we liberalized importation, but only within ASEAN. Mm -hmm. But then we have only limited uh, maize production in ASEAN, but they liberalized everything. So they import a lot of corn from, from outside the country, from U.S., from uh, North America, and they're able to get a low cost, uh, feed, feed, uh, feed, uh, low cost of material feedstock for their feed, and they're able to export their feed. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that they have also a highly competitive uh, hog industry. So hanggang uh, feeds lang sila, no? So that's, that's how the international trade and specialization uh, plays out. So that's what I that's what I understand is happening in, in these other uh, countries. Uh, in terms of political will, uh, the, the real the real decision point I think is the zoning. I think it's been pointed out. No, it's mm -hmm. really difficult. And the local government units to whom we have uh, designated the zoning decisions are really beholden to local politics. No, if you zone a certain area as the livestock and poultry area. What about the, the backyard raisers left out no, in that area? And what about the people residing at or near or the other businesses at or near the area that has just been zoned? Sila reklamo. So you're damned if you do and damned if you don't, right? But if we really want a biosecure um, uh, production system for our livestock and poultry, I don't think we can allow the current system that anybody who wants to set up in their backyard uh, will be uh, allowed, no? If we really have to stamp out this, this ASF and prevent another outbreak of uh, avian avian flu. Thank you very much, Ruel. Um, if we may jump to um, uh, to uh, dairy because we have been spending uh, already some time on on uh, livestock and and uh, and um, chicken, no? Um, what is the demand for imported milk in the Philippines higher? Is, is this because the supply cannot meet the demand? Uh, is it because uh, we are not uh, we are not uh, fond of uh, you know drinking milk because we have not been used to doing that? Or does this reflect our preference for imported products? Or is this related to the longer shelf life of imported milk? Perhaps Mr. Fausto can uh, provide answers to this because he has been in the dairy industry for quite some time. Sir, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I've been in the industry for 34 years. I've been milking my buffalo for 34 years. You see my product all over the supermarkets. There is no, there's no animal. Uh, there's no dairy animal in the Philippines. Uh, we need uh, 945,000 and we have only what, uh, 15,000 uh, on the milk line. Uh, yun, yun ang pagkakaiba. And uh, it's, it's capital intensive, you know. Uh, mm. uh, a, a cow, a milking cow or a, a heifer will cost you about 80 to 100,000. Ano. 
just one and to be able to be uh, at least make what 20 at least 20 to be viable no uh like you said in Fontera I mean I've been to Fontera yung Fontera kasi the Fontera is the processing plant at lahat sila they deliver the milk uh, this is in New Zealand no uh, they deliver the milk to the plant at yung government they provide the research and support ano research technology but the farmers uh, different farmers they have about 200 heads uh, average each farmer and they all belong to Fontera and they deliver the milk to the Fontera the processing plant dito sa atin may mamaliliit tayong uh, dairy plant all over the country pero hindi organized yung pagsusupply. Sila sila mismo naglalaban-laban eh no. Ngayon nga nag-aagaw-agawan sa milk feeding sino mag <laughs> sino magsusupply no. Uh, but it will it will go, it will mature, it will mature. It's a century business. Uh, Holland took them 800 years to develop their dairy industry. The United States and New Zealand and Australia 350 years just to develop their industry. Uh, tayo on what uh, 40 years uh, It, it, uh, Thailand will have about uh, uh, 80, 80 years. And in Thailand, they call their uh, agricultural department Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative. That's the name of their uh, department. Giving and Pasisto Cooperative. Um, dito, kailangan natin gawin yon. And because of our geography, we are a nation of island, hiwa-hiwalay. Uh, iba-iba ng language, iba-iba ng ethnic, ano, iba-ibang paniniwala. Ang hirap i-organize, no? Kasakit ang ulo ni Dr. Sonato. <laughs> Pag-organize, iba-iba yung iba-iba yung method nila. Punta ka sa sa Benguet, iba yung style do sa Ilocos, iba mm-hmm. style sa Central Luzon, sa Batangas, mm-hmm. ganyan. Iba-iba. Uh, and it, you, to put them together is a nightmare. Talagang uh, you really have to have uh, an excellent uh, community organizer to do that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. ang sa akin, we go to the barangay level, go to the agricultural technicians to be able to organize them properly. Mm-hmm. Train these technicians by Dr. Sonako and then uh, organize them properly. But it will take time uh, because the the law, our law, the downloading of all resources of DA and support to the uh, agricultural sector is through the agricultural cooperative or even irrigators association. Yung irrigators association which are present eh kayo, ginawa lang yon to justify yung pagtaas, pagtayo ng pantabangan dam, magat dam. Mm-hmm. Eh, hindi naman, t- kausapin mo sila, walang nandiyan dyan. Eh. Uh, mm-hmm. Ganun din, even the court, punta kasi sa bela, sabog-sabog sila. No? We need to organize them, put them together. And the the very uh, incentive to do that is profitability. If you're making money because of that, people will go and ano, pag kumikita, yun ang ano, okay. importante. Yeah. That's a very good point, sir. Yeah, consolidation is key, but there has to be appropriate interventions to make this uh, cooperatives, uh, um, you know, sustainable as well. No, okay. We have a question here from Dr. Peter Sto, president of the Philippine Poultry Integrated Alliance. He's he asked, do we have a study about the Philippine right to farm bill? or a similar policy that guarantees tenure of poultry farmers, including those that are closing down. Uh, who would like to answer this question? I saw, okay, Mr. Fausto, I saw you uh, smiling. <laughs> and, and yeah, I, I, we can go to um, Ma'am Ruth. Well, well, we, we have, yeah, we, we have this uh, land use bill. Nag-aaway na nga sa Senado. Alam mo naman yung dalawa to, nagbabanga yan eh. Let them, ano, kasi may developer dyan. At may isa nagkupa dyan. Uh, kamukha na example namin. Let me cite an example, Consolacion. Sa Cebu Federation of Dairy Cooperative, nagbigay ng more than a thousand heads of uh, milking cows sa different houses doon. Sa, nasa backyard nila yan. And then, Uh, suddenly, Consolacion passed an ordinance declaring the area as a residential area. So, naging illegal lahat sila doon. Ngayon, ubos yung Cebu Federation of Dairy Cooperative. Uh, naging illegal yung kanya. Ganon din yung poultry. Uh, susumbong, pag dumating na urbanization, nandiyan ng housing, kasabihin ng kapitbahay, malangaw, maano, mabaho. Uh, so, i-declare yung poultry mo. Eh, daan milyon ang investment mo sa poultry. Uh, until we have that proper land use bill that was passed by Congress three times and being blocked in the Senate three times. <laughs> we have to pass that. Uh, and each 
LGU should have an agricultural development plan. What the law says that Philippines, uh, you have the local development plan, that's a mandato mandatory requirement for them. But they need an agricultural development plan. Because the primary main responsibility of the LGU under the local government code is to develop the agricultural se sector. Section mm -hmm. 17, number one, letter A, lahat, parangay, municipality, city, provinces, develop the agricultural sector. And do they have an agricultural plan to develop them? Nothing. Sa isang barangay, may gagawin nila, magtatayo ng street light, solar light, yon ang project. Uh, ganyan ang mayayari. We, we, we need, kailangan ayusin yung, yung at i-implement natin yung local government code. We need the, the local government as the, silang frontliners eh, silang bepera eh. We cannot just rely, nag-download na nga yan sa Garcia, uh, Mandanas okay. Garcia ruling, uh, 27% binaba sa kanila. So, okay. kailangan okay. natin yan. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fausto. Ma'am Ruth, um, quick response if you have any no, I, I totally agree kay ano, Sir Danny. Although sa, kasi sa, I mean, sa implementation, we, we have had bottlenecks on this one. LGU is not really uh, allowing the many FCAs to, to establish facilities because of uh, zoning, etc., etc. And we have been uh, 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 giving briefers to the current uh, DA secretary as well to to have this uh, land use act uh, passed up. and so many uh, resolutions coming from PICAP, the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries, so that we may be able to fast track the the passing of this uh, bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you very much, yeah. Mom Ruth. Uh, we have a question from Doctor from uh, Mr. Daniel Agustin on uh, what the government is doing to help the LPD. Uh, Industries, I, I think you have already answered uh, answered them in your presentation. Okay, so let me jump to another question. Okay, we have one here from Nelson Enoho of Maasin City, LGU in Southern Leyte. Perhaps you can answer this, ma'am, or any of our ano, um, uh, resource per persons. Bawal pa rin ba ang swill feeding sa mga alagang baboy? Meron po bang mga paraan para mapaganda ang nutritional quality sa swill feed? Marami kasing restaurant at market waste dito sa aming materials recovery facility. Sana mapakinabangan ito. Anyone? Com com compost <laughs> na lang. Ay, compost na lang <laughs> daw. Compost na lang. Yes, yes. Y okay. Yan ang source ng uh, ASF, eh, yung swill feeding. Yan ang primary oh. cause. Eh. Kaya kita sa Motalban, naubos yung mga baboy dito. Ha? Yung ah, mga ah. basura sa payatas, binibenta nila, kinatabi ah. nila yung kanin baboy, yun ang pinakain. Kaya nag naglutang yung mga baboy dyan, sa naubos yan, nagumpis sa San Mateo. Naubos, ang kumalat na. Yan ang nagumpis sa. Oh. Yan swill feeding. Okay, okay. So thank you. Yung, yung short answer doon, Sheila. Please, please, uh, Sunny, go ahead. Please. Yeah, so yung short answer is uh, supposedly bawal pa rin. Kasi nine regions pa rin yung meron tayong ASF. Uh -huh, and still uh -huh. feeling nga yung sabi ni Sir Fausto, main source of uh, the spread. Siguro, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can I go back a bit dun sa... Please, please about... go ahead, Sunny. Yes, yes. Okay. Sa ating mga previous ano, questions, if you have anything to say. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of discussion on cooperatives. And mm -hmm. yeah, we've been looking at this for decades and decades now, no? 40 years. No? Actually, since I started working after college, you know, I've been mm -hmm. looking and dealing with cooperatives. And it's sad that Mr. Fausto said that less than 700 actually exist right now as agri-related cooperatives, no? given the totality of number of cooperatives. And the main reason is yung concern natin na community organizing really is not enough. It has mm -hmm. to be enterprise development. You have to operate a cooperative as a business and it has to be viable. So I think that would be um, the attractive part in terms of us aggregating individual farmers or individual growers. Because so they have to, to look at something that's viable, where they will earn, no? where mm -hmm. they will profit compared to what they are doing now. Tama si Rovel earlier that uh, it's very easy for individuals to race ahead of swine or two or three or four in their backyard. No? Very small amount of capital is required. But uh, magnify that to a more profitable level 
then you have a lot of concerns. And sabi nga nung, I think it was five years ago when I had an interview with the AI. And they were saying that napakalaki nung, nung stress and risk and threat coming from the uh, zoning uh, of areas within localities. So yung pinag-uusapan kanina and Lua, that's really required, but it's not, I think, a cure-all. Because even if we pass a National Land Use Act, imagine how we will ground that. Because right now, go to LGUs, they have their CLUPs. Yes. They have their, their CDPs with mm-hmm. agri-related development plans. But are they implementing such? Are there zoning uh, ordinances being implemented? Hindi rin eh. so, or in update Vanilla regularly? Yun pa. And yun ang pa. meron pa yung requirement that they have to be climate and disaster mm-hmm. uh, mainstream no? in those mm-hmm. documents. And the, and the LGUs are not really complying. Mm-hmm. We don't even That's have right. the thematic plans for uh, climate change and disaster risk reduction and management. So, mm-hmm. ang laki-laking question, we are putting a lot on the shoulders of our LGUs. And then, ito That's pa, right. dumating yung Mandanas Garcia <laughs> Uh, ruling and sabi natin lalaki talaga yung pondo ng ating LGUs pero parang sa, right now parang nangyayari nauulan na sila ng katakot-takot na responsibilities and mm-hmm. I think uh, it will not be enough for them to actually uh, be in a better position uh, parang sobrang nipis na nung madadagdag na, na resource sa kanila because of that Mandanas Garcia ruling for mm-hmm. them to actually do better Mm-hmm. baka maging plague pa nga yan eventually in the near future that LGUs will really suffer instead of them uh, being uh, more progressive because of that added uh, tax allocation mm-hmm. okay hopefully hopefully ano naman uh, maging maganda yung ano mangyari okay Roel um, before I go to you ma'am uh, I think uh, Roel it has raised his hand yeah Roel, so please? Can, can we go back a bit on dairy and the issue of uh, coordination sure. with local governments? Sure, sure. So I, I'd like to uh, propose the model ng, ng Thailand and how they you know, uh, boosted their local dairy through their local school feeding program. Mm-hmm. Uh, once upon a time, in the previous king, Bumibol, he really adopted uh, local dairy industry. And he made it a priority for agricultural development. I believe this was in the 80s. No? Mm-hmm. And when, when a program is being backed up by the king, all the agencies of Thailand are sure, no? because ayaw nilang mapahiyang mag-report na, oh, to the king, na, oh, sorry, we weren't able to implement this. No? So that they all, this, this forced them, to sort of compelled them to work together uh, if it's under royal sponsorship. Uh, I don't think we, we have a similar thing, but maybe we can we can try because there's a real opportunity for the debt ed because they have funds under the national feeding program. Yes. Problem is it's a chicken and egg problem. Eh? Uh, they say, oh, we're not going to use it to buy local milk. We'll just use it to buy uh, imported milk uh, or, or uh, back to your question a while ago, imported milk for our school feeding. Because there's no milk nearby na magpo-produce. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yung mga exactly milk important. producers naman, mm-hmm. uh, we will not expand our dairy lines, etc. Kasi ang liit-liit naman ng market ng gustong mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. mamili. So, this this is an opportunity to engineer actually the creation of this market and resolve this chicken and egg problem. But it requires the close working together in, in siguro selected districts starting from the national level and cascading mm-hmm. down because this has to happen no, no, at the local level. Uh, where, where the debt signals clearly we're committing this much for procuring locally yeah. produced milk, not imported milk. Yeah. We want really fresh milk, not this packed UHT thing. No, we we want we we want to get fresh milk, uh, and then then the DTI comes over and says, okay, mm-hmm. we have we found mm-hmm. investors invest in the cold chain, DA BAI, uh, sorry PCC or whoever from Buffalo Milk. Says, mm-hmm. okay, we're here, we are here to facilitate the importation of the dairy. The LGU says we'll process all the permits, we'll provide the technical assistance, and so on. Mm-hmm. And this doesn't need to be rolled out on a nationwide. No, we could pilot this in specific areas. Na meron ng strong presence and large school uh, children mm-hmm. population, uh, and that'll that'll be their captive market. So we we can grow this little by little and get get something and 
you know, send somebody to study what they did in That's Thailand right. so that mm-hmm. we could replicate it here. So I think this is this is one opportunity to really, you know, fix the this value chain mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. from from uh, dairy animal breeder animal all the way down mm-hmm. to end line consumption of the school children. Get this fragmented system we have together and do some serious competitive import substitution, and then mm-hmm. you know give a shot in the arm both to our school children with healthy food product. And to our dairy farmers, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that is a very good way of of, of um, approaching the problem in 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 a holistic manner, you know. And as you've mentioned, it needs a whole of government approach, you no? Know? So the different agencies you mentioned, the Ed, you mentioned the DTI, you no, know? even the DILG because they are the ones in the on the ground, you no, know, working with our LGUs. And the LGUs. You know? they have, yes, they have a role to play. Okay, uh, Sir Danny, uh, tawagin ko muna si Ma'am Ruth, no? And then I go to you. Okay. Ma'am Ruth, sige po. Uh, quick Uh-oh. response. Ma- very, po. Uh, Opo, yeah, kasi very, we don't have time anymore. Sige po. Very quick, dun sa swill feeding, as far as the Department of Agriculture is concerned, we, we do not um, encourage uh, uh, feeding uh, swill to our pigs. Okay. Now, y- yung... Uh, yeah, so that's one. And then... Uh, the you y- silent model which uh, Doc Ruel was uh, saying I, I I really do feel that it's a very good model because we've been so many times sa silent and uh, we see how how important it was in that in their development in their their industry nevertheless um in defense of our NDA and uh, PCC in fact meron naman ang whole of government approach if I may call it that way because we have the dep mandated na siya, especially in the school feeding program. The, nevertheless, ang, the loophole nga and, uh, is, is that uh, basta milk, no? you will feed milk. It, the essence says whether it's local or imported. And our uh, administrator from the NDA and PCC is doing something about that. And of course, we need the help of the private, private sector on this one. Now, on a very small scale, I know for a fact that uh, this um, we have this, um, I just forgot if it is Padre Garcia or Rosario, you, the, the small cooperative there, they have a tie up with a small school as well. So they supply the, 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 the milk in that school. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Ruth. And Sir Danny, please, yeah. um, quick I just questions. Like, I just like to react to Roel. Meron in place na, may batas the sa, milk pe- sa school oh. children feeding program. As a matter of fact, our cooperative, we are supplying Quezon City, Manila, and Valenzuela, no? Uh, getting the milk from the Ebeisiha, all the other cooperatives there, 18 towns, we're getting that. Together with Santa Maria Dairy sa Bulacan, ano? we're supplying Manila. We have, we're supplying both the DepEd requirement and the DSW requirement. And by law, by law, the Dairy Development Act, it is the, the if it is a feeding program, milk feeding program, government cannot get it from any other except from dairy farmers or dairy cooperative. It's in the law. If you do that, then you will violate the law. <clears throat> Ngayon, misan, uh, dinagdagan nila if it is uh, 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 practicable, ano, nilus- yung IRR, nilagyan na gano'n, ano, para makapasok yung Alaska, tsaka ang daming nag ano, no? And, and we we objected to that. We, I, I put that with the Secretary Briones. Uh, ewan ko kung kamag-anak mo si ng DepEd. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are now, we have succeeded. The problem is, Thailand has 25 billion a year budget for the milk feeding program. The Philippines nasa 400 million. Uh, 1 billion yung pinakikiusap namin, kaya naman namin ano, uh, supplyan up to 1 billion. And we have that uh, and all out that the the formulation required by NDA and PCC require fresh milk. Fresh milk. Kapag hindi fresh milk, may powder. Of course, may formulation sila sa nutritional content based on the Nutrition Council formula. Siyempre, may ibang ingredient. No? Kunyari, gusto ng mga bata, chocolate milk. Kasi nagsasawa sila sa puro puti, no? yung white milk. Nagsasawa yung mga bata, gusto nila medyo may chocolate, no? which is more uh, nutritious, may fiber, no? yung chocolate. So these are, these are the... But it is going on. Uh, it's ongoing. And we are expanding our... No? Being the chairman of Dairy Confederation, we are looking at this uh, now and... Uh, uh, we are happy that it 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 profiles. Dati, wala. 30 million lang ang budget ng school children milk feeding program. Ngayon, na-improve na. We are, we try to get 1 billion to 2 billion. 
sana uh, eh sana ba i don't know with this uh, ewan ko yung pinasan na batas i don't know with the GAA ngayon thank you okay thank you very much so uh well we don't have time anymore but let let this be our final question this one is from Louis Lumawik and any of you can answer this are there best practices in other countries in terms of bank lending to our racers which can be replicated by our local banks, especially rural banks? Anyone uh, who would like to answer this? Um, okay, this... May, may I respond, may I respond yes, to that? Po. Yes, sir, <clears throat> go ahead. The, the problem is uh, the central bank has a risk management system in place in the manual of procedure. So that is... Uh, <clears throat> You follow the camel's rating, capital adequacy, uh, uh, capital asset management, earning liquidity, and uh, susceptibility uh, sensitivity to risk. Camels. If you go below three, then you are a uh, TCA, meaning prompt correct, corrective action, meaning papa bankrupt ka na yung banko. No? What happened then was uh, you need when there is you need an application, somebody to apply. And wala capacity yung ating mga farmers to do that. More than 50% of our farmers did not finish elementary. They don't know how to do a business plan or a feasibility study. That is what is required by the bank. And the bank will require also a three-year experience uh, uh, and, and cash flow no? uh, and ability to pay back. That is in the requirement of the manual procedure. If you do not follow that, central bank will take out your license as a bank. So nag, nag, ano sila, uh, that, that's the very thing that is uh, preventing us. There is no initiator for a project proposal from the farmer, even the cooperatives, to make a proposal. Uh, okay. we, need, we need business management people to, to help uh, and packager or financial advisors to help the farmers package this loan and get the loan from the banks okay. and properly package it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Fausto. Ma'am Ruth, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Michila. And um, yeah, be, very quickly, lang, as I would just like to point out that as far as the Department of Agriculture is concerned, we do have windows, small, uh, small window for, for um, also small loans to our farmers. And uh, mm -hmm. these are grants. This is through the Agricultural Credit Policy Council. Very minimal ang, ano niya, ang, um, ang interest rate. So uh, yeah, yeah, but then of course, yung uh, uh, business proposal is, is something that we that we also have to 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 encourage ating mga possible uh, borrowers. But just to inform, Ru see that oh. question. Ru uh, is it, one yes. minute, one minute. <laughs> yung yung ACPC hindi pwedeng magpautang diretso. It goes through a conduit yes. bank. Kamukha no kasama yes. namin Kalasag. Nagtatanim sila ng sibuyas na, ano? Nagtapos na sila sa sa seedlings, nagtransplant sila ngayon, nangungutang sila sa ACPC. Pinadaan sila sa Pro Farm do sa San Jose. Yes. Hanggang ngayon wala pa. Nagrarally na sila doon, ano? Uh, <laughs> dati sa San Leonardo ni Ebesia. Hindi pwedeng magpautang by law, hindi pwedeng magpautang ang DA eh, diretso. They go to a conduit. Once you go to a conduit bank, then you fall on the manual of procedure of central bank or the central bank take out your license if you do okay. not follow the rules of the central bank. Yes, we, we allow them 3% uh, admin fee. So kaya nga kami sa nagtataka yung ating mga, mga borrowers. But, but yes, that's very true. Mm -hmm. Ang ating ACPC has to go to a conduit uh, bank. But still, mm -hmm. yeah, um, uh, I just really would just like to inform yung ating pong nagtanong na as far as the DA is concerned, we have a low interest uh, window for, for, for borrowers like him perhaps uh, through ACPC and through a conduit bank. Mm -hmm. uh, land to... bank. Land bank na lang inaasahan natin. Land bank. Eh, yung land bank, pupunta pa sa Maharlika investment mm -hmm. fund yung pera nila. Mawawala na naman ang pera yung mga magsasaka. <laughs> okay. Dahil pera na magsasaka, ipauutang yung land bank, bukuhanin ng Maharlika investment fund. Okay, we can have another discussion on the credit support for farmers because PIDS has uh, conducted um, studies on this. No, we can we mm. can uh, um, uh, dwell on the issues and the proposed solutions on that, and we can reserve that for for another webinar. Okay, but at this point, uh, apologies, but we have to uh, close our um, 
uh, open forum. And to cap our discussion, may I ask our speakers for some brief parting words if they have any. May we hear first from our study authors, Dr. Sunny Domingo and Dr. Roel Briones. Sunny, you may want to start. Yes, Sheila. Uh, first off, thank you to, to your team for organizing this afternoon. Um, and of course, to our very uh, capable and well-endowed uh, reactors in the person of Mr. Fausto and uh, Dr. Sonaco. I think it's clear that uh, we need to do something for the livestock, poultry, and dairy industries in the country. The government has been uh, neglecting, I think, these uh, industries uh, far too long, even though they contribute around one third of the sector's output. So uh, what more if, if the government uh, adds uh, a bigger chunk of public investment into livestock, yes. into poultry, and into dairy. So we see entry points for intervention for, for I think, the three major stakeholders. Uh, you've got your government institutions trying to secure the future of uh, our stakeholders within these industries because there are very defined risks uh, in terms of their survival, really. Uh, you know, I think swine producers, poultry producers are being chased away from their supposed production areas. And there are laws uh, or bills being crafted to actually answer such threats, but... Uh, we need to do more because LGUs in the end will be implementing everything. And right now they have the means to actually do their thing and implement because they have their clubs, their CDPs, and their thematic plans. Um, for our smallholders, it's very good that they are doing well in terms of contributing to the market supply of uh, work in, in the country. But we see a lot of also entry points for uh, augmenting their uh, profitability and productivity. And they are, in the end, also because of lack of uh, stringent biosecurity measures, they are contributing to the downfall of their respective industries. So we need to, I think, uh, capitalize on our, our bureaucratic actors. Si meron kanina ng question about our uh, pers uh, people in government doing mm -hmm. things. No? Pero I think that we have very capable people in government uh, you have here Dr. Sonaco, and you have so many livestock specialists within uh, the bureaucracy, not only at the national level, but also uh, within the LGUs. But we need more um, because a lot of them are actually focusing, well, the local technicians are focusing on crop production, crop specializations, and uh, only a little on livestock uh, specializations. So extension, uh, technology transfer, has actually cooperating with uh, those knowledgeable institutions outside government. And I think that's the key in Thailand because they've been doing their thing in terms of developing uh, new ways of lessening costs for production, including feed technology. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about ruminants, you're talking about the high cost of feeding uh, your swine, your poultry, then you have to invest on developing technology, R&D. Mm -hmm. R&D, yes. That's it. Uh, thank you again. And... Uh, Maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga matin this afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Sunny Domingo. And now may we hear from Dr. Ruel Briones. Ruel? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks as well, just like Sunny, for all of your attendance and much appreciated again for our panelists and the interaction uh, from the questions of, from, from, the, from the audience. So I'd like to make a final pitch no, for... for uh, um, uh, consolidation and cooperatives... Uh, I'd like to point out, uh, together with Danny, that in, in Thailand, again, our model, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture is also a ministry of cooperatives. Uh, it, it, uh, we, we mentioned about, you know, CDA being a little bit obstructionist. I think it's okay, Naman, that we have a firm regulatory hand uh, that doesn't need to be uh, the developmental function also. We could have a separate developmental agency Hopefully, the, the DA and the local government units can take on this no? in community organizing. Let's not leave it to, uh, if I may say, the leftist no? <laughs> organizing these peasant organization. It, it doesn't need to be you know, defaulted to, to this group, which is tend to be anti-government. Government itself can, can, uh, can uh, 
produce these groups, not necessarily for political reasons, but purely for developmental reasons. And I think very recently there's a new law, I don't know to what extent it's being obeyed now, creating a mandatory position of a cooperative officer in local governments. So nauna pa yun kaysa yung mandatory municipal agriculturist, <laughs> yung cooperative officer. Although it's not agricultural cooperatives, no? but at least it's cooperative. But I think that's a starting point to get our local governments uh, also engaged in hopefully organizing our farmers and through that to achieve some of the gains that we're talking about in terms of consolidation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Ruel Briones. And now may we hear from Ruth Ms. Uh, Dr. Ruth Nitlak Sunako. Ma'am, in your uh, final words, perhaps you can also answer a comment from our uh, one of our uh, uh, attendees, uh, Mr. Fermin Diaz. Um, his uh, comment pertains to the need, need for uh, beefing up the skills, the empathy, dedication, and passion of our... Uh, um, staff in the livestock and poultry it, of our DA livestock managers. That is one of your her comments. Perhaps you can also include this in your final words. Yeah, thank you very much, Ma'am Sheila, and also to Mr. Fermin Diaz. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, if you ask me, we have enough people in the Department of Agriculture who are dedicated and uh, really uh, would want to help yung pong ating mga mali, particularly yung ating mga maliliit yung ating mga smallholders we, we had a lot of people of that in, in the Department of Agriculture and also in the livestock sector and also sa ating regional level at sa ating local government units we have these dedicated people um, nevertheless sabi ko nga uh, I, I think the disconnect really is that um, yung the and, and this has been recognized so many times. Kaya nga po, we have this uh, move really to uh, some some moves really to renationalize re yung ating mga agricultural extension workers so that merong immediate connect si, si Department of Agriculture with the local government units. Uh, and somehow, particularly as a livestock, uh, of course, we all know that uh, the Department of Agriculture is only up to the level of the regional field unit. Mm -hmm. That's why we are also advocating and perhaps P uh, PIDS could help us come up with a study on this one. I mean, the, 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 the need, the role of this um, uh, livestock uh, agencies at the local government unit relative to vis-a-vis -vis the national government. Because as of the moment, the, the position of uh, veterinarians at the municipal level is not uh, mandatory. Uh, and, and that's one thing that we really have to love, especially with the advent of this uh, really economically uh, devastating diseases, AI, ASF, mm -hmm. we really have a disconnect with the local government unit. Well, well, not all, of course, because as we always say, communication would always be the key. Monitoring would always be the key. Nevertheless, it would really help if we have these uh, people connected to, readily connected to the Department of Agriculture, particularly in disease monitoring and uh, disease control and uh, prevention. But going back <coughs> to the question of Mr. Diaz, I, I, I don't really think that we have, um, Sababapo, at the lower level of, of the government, we have these dedicated people who work 24 hours a day to help our small home people. Thank you very okay. much, uh, Dr. Uh, Ruth Sonako. And finally, may we hear from Mr. Danny Fausto. Sir? Uh, thank you again uh, for PIDS for this opportunity. And uh, it was really a privilege uh, interacting with uh, my idols, Dr. Biones, Dr. Domingo, and of course, my good friend, uh, Ruth. Uh, and uh, I had fun in, in, in this discussion today. It's really fun. And uh, I'd like to also confirm what uh, Ruth is saying. Maraming magagaling sa DA. Maraming magagaling. Andiyan pa si, si Yusek uh, R.B. Vichera dito. No? Uh, kulang lang ng suporta, walang budget. Ngayon, uh, bubuhusan. Now, the thing now is to prepare themselves to download this about 60% increase in the budget uh, mm -hmm. and downloading this money. Uh, so the, the organization should be well-oiled uh, 
encouraged, we're inspired to really download this money. There's so much problem in the agricultural sector, in food security, in food production, efficiency, and so on. But it has to be with the help of the private sector. Uh, I, as representative of the private sector, Philippine Chamber of Agriculture, we have 48 sectors, agricultural sectors, that we represent. And uh, it involves livestock, crops, and everything, fruits, even the uh, supply chain. Uh, and, and we are always there. I've been I've been dealing with the DA, and I, I tell you, uh, magagaling sila. Kailangan lang talaga ng suporta. Uh, uh, ang priority ng government before was uh, BBB, infras- Department of Finance Secretary, Dep- uh, Infrastructure, Education, and Health. Wala ang food security sa kanya. It's uh, agriculture for him is a dying industry. Um, uh, and then later on, we will have to teach our children how to eat bridges and roads. And concrete roads. Ano? Pag hindi natin, ano yan ng food security? Uh, papano ka magkakaroon ng health? Paano magkakaroon ng education? Kung nagugutom ka at walang laman ng iyong sikmura. Um, and so, there's a lot of problem in the culture. We have to help each other. And it's a good thing that now the president is the secretary. At least, hindi na kami namamalimos ng budget. Immediately, may mataas sa budget. Natuntuwa kami dyan. Now, downloading it, madali yung plano. But but the implementation is another thing. Uh, Yun ang problema. So thank you again uh, to the participants. Thank you for your questions. Uh, it has been fun. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. Well, what um, an engaging discussion we just had. We hope that our webinar today has given everyone an informed view of the current state of our LTD industries, uh, the issues that these industries are facing, and actionable recommendations to address those challenges and make this industries competitive and resilient, as well as to ensure that our uh, food basket is, a, is sustainable. Okay, so please join me in thanking all our speakers for the nuggets of wisdom that they have shared with us this afternoon. Let's give all of them a big virtual clap. Okay. And thank you also to those who join in the discussion by sending uh, their comments and questions. Okay, so at this point, um, may I um, announce the winners of our webinar raffle? Okay, so from uh, these are all from Zoom. Uh, Nelson Enojo, Imelda Lumangla, Jason Santiago, Josephine De Villa, and Gary Pano. Okay. So, and finally, we have some reminders. Okay. So, you can access all the presentations from today's uh, webinar on the PIDS uh, website. So, we will post uh, the, um, um, the presentation. And also, you can also download the full uh, copies, the full studies of Dr. Briones and uh, um, Dr. Domingo, okay? Also, please answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. Your comments are important uh, to us to improve our virtual events. Also, please regularly visit our website and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We also have a YouTube channel where you can access the recordings of all our events. So, Sheila, uh, do you include Danny's presentation a while ago? Yes, we will have it uh, posted okay. also on the yeah, website. That would be, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And finally, we would like to acknowledge the various organizations <clears throat> from the government, academe, civil society, business, and international development community that joined us today. Maraming salamat po. Friends, this concludes our virtual policy forum for today and, and our last webinar for the year. We completed uh, 31 webinars which are all well attended thanks to your support. We hope to see you again next year when we resume our public webinar series. In the meantime, stay healthy and stay informed too. May you and your family have a wonderful celebration of the holiday season. Maraming salamat po. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all. Merry Christmas, everyone. Simbang gabi na po, mamaya. <laughs> <laughs>